And that's when I actually stopped watching Mr. Beast's content because he always in interviews says the thing about him is he keeps it real. It wasn't real. I was top three and he edited it to be all men. podcast. I am so excited to be joined by really a YouTube legend, beyond YouTube, mainstream legend, and so much more actress, YouTuber, baker, host, just everything, Rosanna Pancino. <laughs> Thank you for having me. And my cheeks are about to be pinker than these walls because I just get so embarrassed. That was a really sweet intro. You do. I always have known you've done so much, but when I really did the deep dive, I'm like, oh my gosh, you have been on every like show. It's not just podcasts. You're like on Kelly Clarkson. You're on all these things. I'm like, wow, you're like one of those ones who transitioned to mainstream off YouTube, which is insane because you also started kind of mainstream did youtube now you're like mainstream all over again oh yeah it kind of came back around <laughs> and now everything's working together and i'm really happy that it's in that place because when new media was first emerging i think there was a little bit of tension between what they called old media traditional media and new media and people were like we're not sure what's gonna happen we don't know where the you know cards are gonna fall or whatever and um it got a little dicey for a little bit but now it's pretty integrated I think it's in a much better place yeah what do you prefer like do you have a preference one or the other I like them both for different reasons like I see myself always creating YouTube content because I enjoy it I Mm -hmm. genuinely love it and enjoy it and I get to be creative and have fun and it's just my people that's my community like this is my home Mm -hmm. um but I I love performing. I love acting. I love singing. I love hosting. I just like making stuff. Like I like making TV shows, movies. So I think that whatever project I'm doing, I'm always going to bring my YouTube community along with me mm-hmm. because that makes me the most happy. So I think really? it's always going to be like the blend of both worlds for me. Wow. Because it's like, it's almost like you're more connected as far as like you can actually talk. Because like watching you on last night was the Halloween cookie bake off show. Yes. I watched it oh and gosh, it was so good. Yes. My mom is like the big fan. When she saw you at my at Malibu's birthday, yes. she's like, I love her cookie show. And you're like, it's coming back. And she was like, so excited. And it's, but it's cool. It's weird to see you on there because on YouTube, you are so personable. You like, like people know you, but then to see you like on this production, on this set, on this like legit show, it's so surreal to see. I was like, wow. And you're so good. You're so professional at it. Oh my gosh. Which is amazing. Did you do like hosting? Cause you went to college, but you weren't, didn't go to college for like entertainment. You went a teacher, right? No. Yeah. I went to college. I didn't know what I was going to be. I just knew that my parents from a very young age said, you're going to college mm-hmm. and they sacrificed so much to even for me to have that opportunity. So even though I didn't know what I wanted to do, I knew I had to graduate from college because my dad worked his buns off um, to support our family and even create those opportunities. So um, I actually wanted to go to an acting school, but I promised my dad I would get a degree And Mm -hmm. so I did. Um, And he said, you know what? If you decide you want to do acting after, we'll support you. But I really want you to have this degree in your back pocket just in case, you know, for life. And I said, you know what? That's fair. And he did so much for me. What's four years getting a degree? You know, it, it. who cares? How could, how could that hurt me? And, right. and I don't think that it has hurt me. I think that I learned a lot and I think I'm better for it. Yeah, it's, it's funny, but I, I definitely would have gone to acting school like right away. Would you and, have right away? Yeah. Interesting. Were you acting while in college? Like, did you do theater and stuff in college? I did. I also did it in high school. So, so funny because we're <laughs> wearing our pink ladies yes! today. I love that you dressed up with me. I was like, who can who will dress up in a Halloween costume yes. with me, Rome? I feel like I needed to go bigger. I'm like regretting my no, decision. You look great. I'm you like, are very... <laughs> You're like Sandy vibes. Trish is the cutest little Frenchie ever, <laughs> and I should have brought a blonde wig. 
I just, yeah, in high school, I starred in the musical Grease as Sandy. <gasps> uh, and it just, Grease has a special place in my heart. It's always going to have a place in my heart. It's just such a fun play. There's so much energy, so the good. music, the dancing, the story's so fun. It's just, what a dream role. Oh, the fact that you had to be Sandy, that's like, ugh, I'm envious of anyone who got to play Annie in Annie or Sandy in Grease. Those were always my dream roles. I'm like, oh, no, I'm too old to do either one. No, you're not. No, <laughs> yes, I am. I'll be like the teacher. I'll be like Principal McGee. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> but being Sandy, it would be crazy. Were you blonde as Sandy? I was not. So you, yeah, you brunette. And Sandy. I offered to dye my hair, like, um, but as we were studying Greece, I learned that in the play, the original uh, Sandy mm-hmm. was a brunette. Yep. In the play, and then later, uh, when Hollywood remade it as a movie, they casted Olivia Newton-John, a blonde, mm-hmm. uh, to to play Sandy. But in the original, I have the hair color of the original <laughs> Sandy. She was a brunette. That's so interesting. Uh, so <laughs> they kept me a brunette, but it was ugh, everything about it was so fun. I loved every every bit of it. Like. I'm- so you're like a musical girly, like, cause you yeah. do, like, I love your singing. I love your music videos. Those are everything. But like you started out in musical theater before you like became like acting like on the screen and stuff like that. Yeah. Which is so cool. And then in college, did you do musicals in college then? Yeah. I took acting classes in college. So mm-hmm. I took solo performance. I took opera. Um, I did acting performance. I did, uh, but that was just for fun. That was for me. Yeah. Um, because I needed to get a degree, um, and so something that my parents thought was usable. <laughs> What'd you get a degree in? What was it? <laughs> I think it was communication. Oh, I'm, that's you know, I'm good. Dyslexic and I have ADHD, so I was just. Oh. I literally went to student services and I said, "What's the easiest degree? Oh yeah, to get." And it's a communication. They suggested communication. <laughs> I know a lot of people have it, so. <laughs> yeah. But if you're dyslexic, that is not the easiest. Know. It's a lot of writing. Oh, how did you do it? I had to write a 50-page thesis. Did you do it all yourself? Yeah, and it was supposed wow. to take one semester, but for me it took two. Oh. I had to take it over two because it was just too big. It, it was just too much for mm. me. That, it was really difficult for me to do, but I got through it, but Ooh. it was hard. Then your parents knew, did they know you had were dyslexic when you went to college? They knew I had some type of learning disability, Mm -hmm. but at the time, they didn't know the name of it. Um, I'd gone to an alternative middle school um, for for people who had like learning disabilities, but at the time, we there was they didn't even identify it with the word. Wow. Um, So that was really interesting growing up. It was a little confusing. I knew that it was harder for me to read and write. I was slower at it. Uh, I just processed reading and writing slower. I could still do it. And it was weird because in school, everyone would say I was, you know, dumb, slow, stupid, but I got really good grades because I tried so hard and I would just force myself to get through things. And it was, it was, confusing but yeah in college is finally when I was diagnosed um and thank goodness because now you know when you put a name to you know what you're going through or what what issue you're struggling with it can really help because then you can learn more about it and learn more about yourself and learn how to help yourself Mm -hmm. because before I'm just confused and frustrated what did you do what were like the steps once they told you um a lot of it was uh like uh, just ways around basically uh the things that were difficult like reading. I love reading. I love stories, but I'm not great at it. Mm -hmm. So I learned to do books on tape. There's just a lot of things, being more patient with myself, learning that, you know, I wrote down the list of things that I'm not great at. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Mike and I work hard to like outsource those things. Right. um, Versus trying to force myself to do things I'm terrible at. Yeah. Because that creates like low self-esteem. And that's what I experienced kind of after I graduated college. I tried a lot of different jobs and I sucked at all of them. Got frustrated. I never got fired. I don't know how. Uh, You're just like a hard worker too. I think it shows. They were like, we like your personality. We like the attitude. We see you're making an effort. They just thought I was stupid. You know, like I was doing scheduling for an office and I was messing up all the dates and the times. And, uh, you know, and I was really upset every night. Mm -hmm. Every night I would go home and it doesn't feel good when you go home after a day's work and you just feel like you sucked. Like everything you did sucked. It doesn't build self-esteem. So when I, I was really sad after college. I just was not finding a job that I was any good at. And my mom, that's when she gifted me an acting class because she was like, you're so bummed out. Let's just 
So that was my Christmas gift. Oh my gosh. And I did that acting class and it just brought me so much joy. And it's the only time that mm-hmm. I hear from people like, you're good at this. So it like, gave you that like validation. This is something yeah. you're good at. Mm-hmm. And I got cast on Seattle's largest fan fiction series of Star Trek Phoenix. Wait, what uh, is which that? Made I didn't the see news. that. And what is that? An agent in California saw it and said, if you move here, I'll take you <gasps> as a client. And I said, oh. Packing my bags. Oh my! Wait, were you like a Trekkie? Were you cosplaying? Were you on the show? Like, what was it? Because I haven't yeah, seen anything about that. I, um, I was. I played Ensign Kelly. Ensign on a. These are Navy terms. So on the spaceships, they use Navy terms, like military okay. Navy terms and rankings. <laughs> and so I was Ensign Kelly. So I'm the lowest ranking officer <laughs> on the Starfleet. But you know that's fitting. Oh my gosh! Uh, and so, so like, <laughs> while you were young, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! It was like airing in Seattle, or where, or was it airing everywhere? I think it was Digitally? in Seattle, and they were showing it on TV, which was really cool and fun and exciting. Oh and that's how uh, someone found me. And an agent saw you, and yeah. had, oh my god! So you knew that was. I mean, that has to be the most validating thing to be like, oh, they just picked you randomly. That's great. Are you still with the same agent? No. Oh, no were they no, a big no. agency or like a small? They agency? were a smaller agency, and I. I left because they weren't paying attention to the contracts and giving mm. bad advice. And um, they, at the end of the day, gave me an ultimatum. It was that tension between new media and like old traditional media. And I think old media was a little fearful of, you know, um, new media, like producing all these things. And they said, you know, you have to pick, you have to pick a lane. Wow. You can't do both. And that was the meeting they had. They pulled me in the office and had a meeting and said, if you don't stop making YouTube <gasps> videos, we're going to drop you as a client. Oh my gosh. And I started crying. I was really upset because this is the only person that has ever believed in me professionally. Like, that's my person. So when they said, you know, we're going to probably drop you. And I just said, but I begged with them and I pleaded and I, I told them that YouTube is a wonderful tool. Like the only commercial I had booked that year, it was a Sony commercial, was because the casting director... Uh, a kid was a fan of my YouTube channel. Wow. And I said, this is an asset. This is a great yeah. thing. Like, don't you see the the synergy? Don't you see the... the... And they just didn't have any uh, foresight. Because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, 10 years later, they reached out and were like, hey, want to get coffee? And I was like, no. Oh, did you say no? Good yeah, I did. I said no. Oh, um, good for you. Because now that I'm entering my second act in yes. life... Yes. Oh, man, um, we got to get to that. It was so yeah. interesting what you were saying before. It's going to be acts. the new me. I love it. Do you yeah. think you're in your second act now? Yeah. Oh, I my am. gosh. Because I'm 38 right now, and someone who I really adore, Jane Fonda, was giving an interview and talking about the three acts of life. She views life, like, in three acts. From 1 to 30, that's, like, act 1. 30 to 60, that's act 2. And then 60 to 90 is, like, act 3. Um, I hope I get to 100, but what? But I'm, what? Yeah, what happens then? Oh, wow. Well, I, mean, I guess there's no act. You're in final act. That's, that's like, yeah, that's, like, encore. Yeah, yeah that, that's the encore. That, that is encore. At that point, you just collect your flowers. Yeah. Oh, my God, to be 100? Yeah. I can see it. Just yeah. mail me fluffy dogs and flowers. <laughs> And I'll, I'll just, that's all I want in life. I love it. So yeah, I feel like I, I feel like it's good for people. If anyone's listening, just like to reflect at those stages in life and evaluate where you're at. And if there's things you want to change, if there's places you want to go, things you still want to do or discover, because those are kind of those big milestones. Mm. So I think as I'm entering my second act, I'm, I just, I'm just going to take less crap. I that's think that good. that is my motto. During your first act, what is, what are some of the things, what are probably like the biggest, as you say, what did you say, eat crow? I never eat heard that. Crow. You said that earlier. What does that mean? Ate so much crow. What was the biggest crow you ate in oh, your act one? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> is crow like the animal crow? How, like, <laughs> like I don't know if it's slang or not. I never heard it, but I like it. <laughs> Actual oh, okay. like, crow. What's, what's eating crow? It's like, like eating dog shit. Like, I'm really? like, 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 literally, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, literally, but, um, oh my God, Mike, how do you explain it? It's, it's, uh, Is it a real it, term? It, 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 or did you just make it up? No, I swear. <laughs> Basically, uh, take a lot of shit. What was the... You just take it. Yeah. And after a while, I just feel like my trauma tank is full, and I feel like it's just spilling out now. Like, there's nowhere else to put it, so it kind of has to stop here because I've just had enough. How did you deal with it? Like, 
people just constantly, what would you say, take advantage because you are so nice. And and that's what I think we want people to yeah. know about you or say about you is that you are just so nice. And it's true. You are like super nice. But with that comes people who want to take advantage of you. So what would you do? Like where, where do you think you, that you got taken advantage of the most in your early career in stage one. Like if 20 year olds are watching, like where would you say, be careful here? Is it the agents? Is it YouTube? Is it your friends? Is it right. other social media people? Like oh, that's such a good question. I looking back, it came from different places. It came from producers. It came from a high powered photographer. I had a really bad, um, situation with that, um, which hopefully one day I'll be able to be brave enough to talk about it. It, A lot of it came from entertainment, but for as much negative experiences that I had in entertainment over the last 15 years, I've also had really wonderful experiences. Like, and just for anyone listening, entertainment is, it's a mixed bag. Like there are some wonderful people in entertainment, wonderful directors, wonderful producers, wonderful co-stars stars, people who are amazing, uh, people who are supportive, respectful, uh, are there for you. It, it, th- I've had so many good people that I almost feel guilty being open about the bad experiences, but I I just can't shove it down anymore. I think is just, I just, I'm, I'm just so sick of it. I think that I watched my grandfather and my dad, they're both Irish, and how they dealt with things, something that would negatively happen to them is they would drink, um, you know, and that would kind of just, it was like a self-medicating mm-hmm. thing, I think, and um, I started to do that. Uh, and, and not excessively, but just if I had a bad day, I'd have a whiskey. That was that was just kind of how I... I, un- I unwinded, I, you know, and now I'm not doing that. I am found healthier things and ways to cope. And I have found that actually talking about, you know, a negative experience that happened that day or something that went wrong on set is a lot more therapeutic. Like it's a lot more healthier than, than drinking. Right. I mean, and I think I've had to learn that the hard way because I didn't really have an example to follow because in my family, something bad happens, they just bury it. I mean, you shove it so deep down, you shove it into that toe, that pinky toe. You just just shove it so far down and you just suppress it. And then, you know, one day it might just spill out. Yeah. But now I feel like I've suppressed so many bad experiences and trauma and, like, I'm just completely full. Like, there's nowhere else to put it. Yeah. So... My, my, yeah, it's like, don't, don't bring it over here because it, I've got nowhere to store it anymore. <laughs> That's good. And I feel because you are established and you're like older, it's good to talk about these things. Cause when you're so young, you're scared. Like you're scared that people won't want to work with you or people think you're drama or something like that. So I think it's important. Like people with, I mean, look at like Gwyneth Paltrow. She started like the Harvey Weinstein thing. And then so many other people came out and then like justice was like served for that. So I think it's like super important to talk about those things, even if they happened 10 years ago, because you get to a point now where you like feel safe to talk about it. Yeah. And I feel, I feel like it's just, cause even now this new generation, even though like everyone's a little more woke and the Me Too movement, there's still those people who like take advantage of nice people, especially girls. I think as like horrible as it is, like young girls get taken and young girls are scared and they want to get ahead and stuff like that. And they'll put up with a lot of crap and not just like sexual advances, just a lot of, um, wrongdoings and yeah. stuff like that. Because yeah. you did reality and you did scripted. You did, like, you were on Glee. Both, yeah. Always Sunny, which Glee I've always heard, like, horror stories. But you also did reality show Scream Queen. So, like, of the two, were they both fun? Were they both scary? Like, Glee, you hear horror stories from all the time. What was your experience first on there? Oh, my goodness. So I'll just say that I've worked on so many different sets. Scream Queens was my first show that I did, a reality show, like, my big project. And since then, I've worked on so many sets. I've worked on Glee. I've worked, uh, I guest starred on Disney. I guest starred on Nickelodeon. I guest starred just recently on NCIS. So um, as Tara Walker, I love that character. We oh filmed God. at Paramount. And all of <gasps> these sets were professional. No set is perfect. There's always, you know, one grumpy person or something, you know. But, yeah. but who cares? The, the, all these sets were professional. They were fun. I felt safe. I had a blast. Even Glee. I mean, Glee had its own problems, but nothing was as bad as Scream Queens. Reality show. The reality show. And I almost 
after that experience, I almost just stopped in entertainment completely because I was so traumatized from the experience. I thought if all sets are like this, it's not worth it. Yeah. I love performing and I love acting, but if this is how I'm going to be treated, that it's not worth it. And I'm glad that I gave acting a second chance after that experience that was at the advice of my parents. They said, I know it's bad, but try a different environment wow. and see. And if and if it's still like that, there's no good, you know, then, then get out of there. Right. That's um, pretty supportive considering they were trying to, you know, they wanted to go to college before acting. So the fact that they were still supporting you. So for people who don't know, Scream Queens was, was the it show. That was the show every young actress wanted to be on. We're only a couple years apart and I wanted to be on it so bad. You were on season <gasps> two. You did? Oh my gosh. I think I, I definitely applied. I definitely applied to season two. We like, would have had so much fun. If you and I went, we would have had a blast. The audition process was like hard. You know what I didn't know? Because I think I was very young. I want to say I was like 18 or something when I applied. I didn't know. Like, I just want to be an actress because I just want to be famous. I didn't know, like, you should, like, memorize your lines. Like, I was, like, reading off the script for my audition. So, like, <laughs> that's obviously, like, a, like a rookie mistake. But I wanted to be that so bad. Because the first season, um, they got a part in Saw, mm -hmm. which was, like, a huge deal. Was it Tanidra? What was her name? There Tanidra was Tanidra Howard. Tanidra, yeah. yeah she won, she the first won first season. one. So I was like, that's amazing. And, like, it was the only way to break into like movie acting back then because like social media was around but it wasn't really like a you know it wasn't like it is now and I just I didn't have an agent I didn't know how to get on so I was like this is my chance so it was a huge show for everyone to be on and it was you won a part in in the Saw movies was the second one for Saw 2 yeah so it's to be a, in a, a character or yeah a character in Saw and they did acting challenges the first yeah. one was James Gunn but James Gunn wasn't in the second right no he wasn't in the second um who was but, the director uh Tim Sullivan but I got to meet James because he he was still involved. Uh, he was going through some stuff uh, privately, oh. so he brought in his friend Tim Sullivan, who directs horror films. Um, but it was wonderful because I still got to meet James and uh, develop a relationship and get great advice from him. And he still today gives me advice. Wow, because yeah. he's huge. I mean, he went on. To, I mean, he was big I back know, then, but and, now he's massive. And I think that just speaks volumes about him and his character that he's so. He's so successful and he's so busy and he still takes the time to, if I have a question, you know, uh, to answer me. Wow. And that, I really appreciate it. Like I, I reached out to him. I was looking for an acting coach because I had the audition for NCIS mm -hmm. and I wanted to try something different. And uh, he advised I work with his, his friend uh, and I did, uh, wow. Ben, and I got, I got it. I booked it. That's I mean, amazing. So uh, he just has great advice. And he's, he's top notch. Such, he's such mm -hmm. a great guy, and he is just really uh, understands actors and and helps them. And 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 I just I can't say enough great things about him. So it wasn't so it wasn't the people on the show that was the bad part. It was what the production like. What was because you talk we talked about it privately because I yeah. just think it's one of the most fascinating things about you. Every time I meet you, I'm like, oh my gosh. My friend Jeff just wrote a horror movie called Thanksgiving. It's coming out this fall <gasps> with Addison Ray. So I was like, oh, she was on Screen Queens. Because to me, Screen Queens is... Are we going to go watch it? Oh, my gosh. Yes, we have to go. We'll go to it, the premiere. I want to go. <laughs> yeah, if that you would go, be... I'm go, I want to oh go Oh, my with gosh. You. Yes, that would be so much fun. I love horror films. Oh, my God. You should be in it. Because honestly, you are you are so good at acting. I saw the NCIS, and I was like, oh, my gosh, it's amazing. And it's amazing you're still doing it. But... Um, back then and we talked about it, like I said in private and you said it's it was traumatizing you use that word and what was what did you think going into it like what were you expecting versus what actually happened yeah so scream queens like Trish said it was uh the show premise was 10 unknown actresses who compete for a role we do acting challenges in for saw seven so if you made it on the show there was uh, a one in 10 chance that you would book the role to be in, um, in a horror film, uh, which was just so cool and amazing. And the way that they had pitched it, um, I was really on board and I thought it was fascinating. And I thought the premise of the show was just so cool. And uh, I had seen a little bit of season one and I just loved all these acting challenges. And I was really looking forward to working with James Gunn. Um, and so I auditioned uh, and I auditioned with 36,000 other women oh, auditioned for the show. You did an open call? Yeah. Where was it? Do you remember? It was like At Universal? Their offices. Wow. At their production offices. Oh, wow. And um, I gave a strong audition. I got a call back and a call back. And I remember there was girls in the waiting room. And when I opened the door and came out of the audition, they just looked at me and they're like, 
that voice was you. And I was like, hee hee. What? Did you do a scream? Were you doing a scream? I, I, they gave you an improv role. Uh-huh. They, they had a scripted part and then an improv role. And the improv role, they wanted me to pretend I was possessed, <gasps> like exorcist, like by the devil. And wow. I went for it. I mean, I just uninhibited went for it. It's amazing. I thought, what does the devil want? You know, what it, what's his what's his background? <laughs> the story? motivation. What's his motivation? <laughs> yeah. But that's a good actress. Yeah, that's like, something I could never fathom. What would be the devil's motivation? <laughs> well, what's your motivation uh, for it? Well, he wants souls. Right. 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 So so I went with that. And wow. um, and they were like, yeah. And I was like, yeah. So Wow. And it, then people outside heard you. They were shocked. They're like, uh, you're such a tiny, petite thing. How did, where did that come from? Yeah. yeah. So I had a lot of fun. I loved the acting challenges on the show. So, so good. I loved the other girls. I loved um, Tim Sullivan and the actress Jamie King. And I loved the premise of the show. What I didn't love and what was traumatizing was the production decisions that they made, how they produced it, and the living conditions. They were Awful. So what year is this? This is 2010 or? 2000. Oh my God. 13 years ago. Wow. Was it? 13 years ago. Was it 2010? (gasps) Yes. This was 2010. So this is early on with reality shows like this anyways. Like this because they did like production. Like it's like you're in a movie, these challenges. So this was early on. This was a baby. 13 years ago. I just graduated college. I like just moved here. This is my first production. That's wild because to me it feels like just yesterday. Like it just feels like I remember it so vividly. You just blink. It was on VH1. Yeah. Yeah, It was on VH1. Mm -hmm. It was um, a Lionsgate production because Lionsgate produces Saw. Right. Um, And I, gosh, okay. So Was Shawnee on it? She was on the first season as a judge. Oh, you said Jamie King. Jamie King King was on the second season. Okay, yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, how much time do we have? Where do I start? We have all, with three hours, five hours go. Okay. <laughs> did you, is your season, I'm trying to think, did they scare you guys? Did they have like scare actors come in? I'm sure, Cause I saw clips of it. Okay. Yeah. I was like, cause I get the two seasons mixed up. I watched both of them, but I was like, I can't remember which one was which. Yeah. Yeah. They had, they had like jump scare actors come in here and there and. Do you get scared? Do you, do you get. I was just physically and mentally exhausted. From so, day one? So you're just seeing someone who's exhausted the entire time is basically what you're looking at. So that was... How do they tell you? So they tell you, do you, how much time do you have to prep before you go in the house? Are you mentally prepared oh, for it? Oh, okay. So let's start, yeah, yeah, at the beginning. Yes, I the love show all this stuff. opens. <laughs> that beautiful house that they have all the B-roll footage mm-hmm. of, this gorgeous house, how they open the show. The very first shot of the show is a lie. I have never seen that house <gasps> I really? don't know what whose house they were filming. It was not the house. We didn't stay in a house. So where'd you stay? That's a part of it. Is if they were upfront and honest about the process and the details, I wouldn't have done the show. It is not a good fit for me. I don't think it's a good fit for a lot of people. But there were so many people, 36,000 women who auditioned for this show. So I think there would have been a lot of people that would have been okay right. with it. Um, and I just wish they were upfront and honest about what the process was going to be like. What was the, what was the thing that you thought they were like sneaky about? We lived in a warehouse downtown LA. I don't know where, because we weren't allowed to drive there. They picked us up from our house in a car and drove us. Well, first we stopped at a hotel for three days. Um, they pick you up from your house. Yep. Stop at a hotel for three days. Stop at a hotel for three days. And here is where we do um, some production stuff, but isolation. So they check us in. Each of the girls get their own private room. Mm -hmm. And they took away our key card. So we could not enter or leave the room. And they said... This is, we're going to isolate you here. You could order food because you had like a per diem a day. So you could call room service and order food, but we weren't allowed to leave. We were in isolation for about three days. Um, We got evaluated by a psychologist. The psychologist mentioned to me and I said, why are we doing this? And they said, well, it's because when you're isolated for three days, then when you meet the other women, you're so depraved of like human interaction, like you're in solitary confinement that you'll create quicker bonds. And they like to do that for reality because the girls will bond very quickly. Um, Wow. So it was a psychological thing. Like... 
Yeah. It wasn't just for production. Like, we want you guys to be surprised. It's like, we want you to bond. Right. Like, trauma so bond almost. Right when I showed up at the hotel and they said that was going on, I already felt uncomfortable because I talk to my mom every day. I talk to my sister every day. We're really close. Uh, for my mental health, I talk to people I love. So yeah. taking that away and putting you in iso- like solitary confinement, I mean, that's one of the worst punishments you can give a human being, and, and that's what they do in jail. Like yeah. the worst the, uh, punishment uh, is solitary. That's a uh, and so you it, go crazy if you don't see people. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. I was. Wow. I started to feel already sad. And not like myself, like my mental health already started to decline Mm. just in those first three days before we were even shooting. And then uh, at the hotel, we did like pictures that you saw in the house of like our headshot photos. Mm -hmm. We did interviews, like your intro interview, like, hi, I'm Roseanne Pancino, <laughs> and I w- w- worked as a church secretary by day and a go-go dancer by night. Is that, is that what yeah. you wear? Oh, I love that. Oh, my God. That's so what I have to do. That's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> and the second time I felt uncomfortable and unsafe was in those interviews. Like, we were sitting down the interviews and, you know, just go like this, how, uh, like, uh, like Mike is, is, is behind the camera, you know, or Mo's behind the camera, and, and and the the producer would ask you questions, you know, to get the interview. And one of the questions they asked me was about my breasts. <gasps> and I just remember it was the first time I just felt like, what does that have to anything to do with my acting ability? How does that play mm-hmm. into a show about actresses competing mm-hmm. in acting challenges for a role? in a Lionsgate film. How does that asking me questions about my breasts, I think they were asking if they were real or fake. I um, That's what they asked? Wow. I didn't answer. I refused to answer oh and it didn't, God. the question didn't make their editing cut, but they have footage of it. Wow. Um, it was very uncomfortable. What did, they, did they try to course anything out of you? They just went on to the next one. They went on to the next one. But upset I, about it. I was really uncomfortable. I, I don't think mm. I could hide it on my face because it was. It started to feel like a gotcha show versus mm. what they preached. It being a unique show uh, and a great opportunity for people who love acting mm-hmm. and are skilled at acting and haven't been discovered yet. Uh, so what they preached and what was happening was just two different things. Mm. It, it, it was extremely uncomfortable. And then when we showed up at the warehouse, not a house, warehouse, and in all the interviews, we had to refer to it as the house. How did the house look? Wasn't the house so good looking? Wasn't the what? house so cool? It was a warehouse. Wow. And I keep saying this because the living conditions were awful. Yeah, there's probably like mice and no. stuff. and heat. So we filmed over Thanksgiving and Christmas. Oh. And it was cold. A lot of people who aren't from LA, they they think that LA in the winter time is bikinis. Right. You know, uh but it, it gets cold. Mm. It was freezing. I was shivering the entire time. They have a wardrobe team, but it's only to like you know, they look at what you brought and they go this 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 and this. They didn't tell us to bring jackets. You know, like they didn't provide them for you guys? No, they gave us a list of what to, you know, kind of bring. And we brought, you know, like dresses and, you know, this stuff. But it it was just freezing. Oh Enough girls complained that they finally brought in those really cheap. Uh, and I can say that because I grew up broke and I got one of these. Those space cheap heaters. space heaters. Those yes. little, like, the cheapest <laughs> space heaters that you can buy. Like Home Depot. Home yeah. Depot. Mm-hmm. Girl, probably Craigslist. Wow. <laughs> For this production company. They borrowed it. Wow. Yeah. And then we'd plug them in, but we couldn't have them being seen on camera. So we could only plug them in at certain times of day. And we and it only had like a 10-foot radius. And we would just like try to get warm. But I had goosebumps and I was shivering. Um, and for every episode, it's a week. So episode one is one full week of wow. shooting. So it's one full week of living in the warehouse. And then I was on That's for long. two episodes. So I was on for two weeks. I wish it was zero. Wow. Um, but it was two. 
Wow, dude, freezing. that's long. I've only done one reality show where we stayed at a house, and it, one episode was two days. I lost ten uh, percent of my body weight. Oh my god, uh, over fifteen pounds because I was fr- freezing. Oh my god, do you think there was some psychological thing to that to keep you guys in those conditions, like in a warehouse freezing, like, or do you think they were just cheap? Because it's not a cheap production. Like they do high scale things, high budget things. I don't know. I just when I reflect back on it, I don't think that they did a lot of things to help us. Because I don't think us being cold all the time and getting sick helps us. Right. I don't think not sleeping helps us. That's the other thing is they kept us up really, really late and then would wake us up really, really early. I didn't get a good night's rest, not one day. So you're just seeing someone get more and more exhausted, just breaking down. I mean, it's just... It was awful. When I got back um, home, I slept for two days straight, and then I had to go to the hospital because I had a fever (gasps) of 103, and it was just from being cold. I literally caught a cold, caught a chill from just freezing. Wow, you could have had, like, pneumonia or something. That would have been so crazy. Wow. Do you think it affected – it obviously affected your performance. So were you able to do the challenges? Like, were you able to – Yeah, I did the challenges. I was actually okay with most of my performances, the acting – ones, the acting challenges themselves, I did okay at. I was good at. No one would know because they didn't air them. Wait, why? They didn't air they are other people's acting challenges? Yes. Same- oh, that's so weird. It was so weird. I wonder it, why. They just did little snippets. Like, they'd throw me in the middle, like, just doing a little snippet. And it wasn't the full story. And I competed in four acting challenges. And out of the four, I went first. Uh, cause they had like, I don't remember it was straws, like drawing a straw or whatever, who got the short straw, all <laughs> me. Uh, yeah, so same. half of the time out of the four, I went first twice. I went first for the first challenge with Tim Sullivan with the mirror. And when we're walking into a room and we're, um, holding this like Pentagon thing and a demon's coming out oh, behind yeah. us. I went first on that. And I don't remember, Mike, do you remember in the edit who they showed going first? They literally said, like, first up, never Jessica, never. first had, up. They always edit it for her to be, like, middle or last. Wow. But I went first and half of the time. That's yeah. a big thing. Uh, going first is, like, a big part of it because, like, you have the least amount of time to prepare. You, uh, you're at the biggest disadvantage because the other girls were watching all of the performances. So it gives them more time to think about the choices they want to mm, make, yeah. to get a feel for the scene, get more comfortable with the scene. And I did great. I went first each time and rocked it. I had a great time. Um, there was a couple instances where it got a little funky, but it... <sighs> Even after the show aired, the judge, Tim Sullivan, the director, offered me a lead role in his horror film. Wow. So you did kind of get something out of it. I I turned it down. I was actually working, auditioning kind of on another pilot for Nickelodeon at the time, and it was very Um. family friendly. So I I didn't think it would be the right fit to, as we were leaning into this family friendly, to then do kind of this very gory horror film. Uh, And so, and I also just wanted to give it a minute. I think it was just a lot. Because she did the scenes, but they edited it to look like she was just staring at camera and said, can I sit down? Yeah. Oh, so the editing even back then, because you hear about that now. Yeah. So they they like pieced together things that didn't happen to make it look like she wasn't doing anything the whole show. They edited me. Wait, what do you mean? Just like sitting around? Yeah. Like I just froze all the time and I never did a challenge. Like I just stood there. For example, there was this challenge where there's a big cauldron. I mean, girl, they would match these chairs, these big, beautiful (laughs) chairs. They had a big old witch cauldron, you know, a jumbo sized one. And the challenge was we had five minutes to go change our clothes, wardrobe change, and they, they drove us in a van to a park where we were supposed to change out in public. Oh there was no God. changing tents. You know, like when you go to sets. I've been on all sets. They got changing tents. Yeah. They, they put up this janky screen thingy, huh. and people could just watch you change. It, you see families, like, playing with their kids. Yeah, you can no see. Way. Was, and they have the girls stripping down their underwear oh to, like, change. So they give you five wow. minutes to change your outfit completely, develop a character, and it was a half scripted, half improv challenge. So they said you'd pick up this spell book, and and half of it was scripted. The words were in there, and then you would have to make up the end. And I was like, okay, cool. So I got an idea, 
and I got up there because I went first. Oh my god! Which they didn't show, <laughs> and I'm the first one to go up there. And I looked in the book, and there's no words where there should have been. Right. Yeah. So I go, hey, hey, sorry, everybody, but um, uh, I think they're, I think we have the wrong prop book. And then they go, okay, hold on, cut, 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 hold on, hold on, let's go check. So producers come out and check it and they're like oh yeah no she's right this is the wrong prop or whatever so they bring out the hero book and it was a smaller little corner and I felt like I was kind of in the way because the crew was you know moving around and so I like turned over and I said like am I done now or can I sit down now I was asking like can I get out of the way while they reset right and that's what they used (gasps) in the show oh my gosh they literally show me walking up there going "Uh, am I done like or getting, can I sit down? Going, hey, there's something, you know, the, uh, and then going, can I sit down? Oh that's how my they cut gosh. me together. They didn't even. Did they show your cha- doing in the challenge then? Or that's it? They no. just have you sitting down as if you didn't that, do the challenge. That, literally, that's what they show. Is that the episode you went home? Was that the second se- second episode? Yeah, I should have gone home. I shouldn't even been there. Oh but my it, God. Li- and uh, Jamie that's King, cool. the actress, I remember when we were about to shoot this witch scene, she just turned to me and she said, I would never do what you're doing to get a role. Really? Like just putting yourself through she this? She said, this is crazy. Really? And I so was she like, knew? Yeah. I mean, I agree. So so what did they tell you then at the elimination? Did they tell you because like, were they like, you didn't do this challenge? Did they make it seem like they that? They said that I was holding back and I wasn't um, getting into it enough and th- th- partially that is true. Not in my acting challenges. In my acting challenges, I did them. Um, and I did them very well. There's one thing I'm confident and it's that I'm a good actress. Mm -hmm. I'm not the best in the world, but I'm good. And Tim Sullivan, the director offered you a part, wouldn't have offered me (laughs) a lead role in his movie. If I was this terrible actress who didn't perform. Right. The problem is you don't see me perform. So people, yeah. On that show. They think you're just like in the background. They literally took clips of when I was, uh, for some scenes of when I was sitting there and they were telling me sound is messed up so just wait a minute so I'm like looking at the <laughs> ceiling waiting for sound oh my god and they take that and they'll put cricket noises over me oh my like god. I'm literally like I like it's oh so messed god. up and wow. I had to deal with the stigma of this show for over a decade mm. and thank god that production companies and businesses like Disney and Nickelodeon, NCIS, Food Network, all of these wonderful people gave me a shot after this show aired because it was awful how they edited me together. They couldn't make me look like a bad person because I didn't talk badly about any of the other women. And you can watch all my interviews. I don't say one bad thing about any of the other women because that's not how I am. That's not how I roll. That's not how I play. I, I'm there for my journey. I'll talk crap about myself when I mess up. I'll talk, and they guided me. They made me, they were like, can you say this? Can you say that? <sighs> I just wanted to go home, so I said it. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it's honestly. What did they have you say that you were like, maybe I wouldn't have said that um, about yourself? I think what I wanted to say, they couldn't air. So what I did want to say is that I love the acting challenges. What I didn't love was the acting, I'm going to put quotes, classes, because I don't want anyone to watch the show or even, because now they've put it on YouTube so people can now watch mm-hmm. it, go back and watch it now. But I don't want anyone to watch that and be like, that's what an acting class is. I had all these moments where it was building of me feeling really uncomfortable and unsafe. And, but then when that acting class, the very first acting class with John Homa started, I just put up a wall. I think I went numb and I thought a lot about it over the years. And I think that it's because I grew up in a very violent environment. And just to clarify, not my immediate family and home. My mom and dad were wonderful and loving and they made our home like a safe place. Uh, But the neighborhood I grew up in, I was very poor growing up. I grew up two blocks from the projects 
and it was very violent. Across the street, our neighbor ran a chop shop. Mm -hmm. uh, they were always on drugs. The cops were always over. Um, one of my neighborhood girlfriends got attacked in our front yard by this huge Rottweiler that our other neighbors were training to fight. Mm. And across the street, the other way, the two boys, the kids I grew up with, who are actually cousins of one of my good friends still today, we still hang out, um, joined a gang and was shot to death right there on mm. the street. So I just, I've seen so much violence from a young age and, and have heard so much abuse. I just am sensitive to to it. Mm -hmm. And when it happens, I just, I'm not a psychologist. I've never been to, to therapy. I honestly, I should mm -hmm. like Trish, I should like, I probably should because it's, it's a lot to process. That it's, stuff. A, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. And I just get really sensitive. I don't even like watching sports where two people are hurting each mm -hmm. other. I don't like watching boxing and watching two guys beat the shit out of each other. Cause I saw enough of that when I was growing up, that it, it, it hits me different. It's just not uh, for me. And so when we entered that acting class, John Homa was yelling at us, mm. screaming at us, verbally abusing us, threatening us. And he wanted us to smash this pumpkin to show rage. And he took a bat and he started wailing on this pumpkin and breaking stuff. Mm. And when you watch somebody lose their shit, like you watch somebody, you know, get angry and punch a hole in the wall, it affects you. And it made me just shut down. And I, because that's how I deal with violence and trauma is I just go numb. So I didn't perform well in the acting classes. Class. Yeah, it's not a scene he was doing. It's like this. I don't even think it was an acting class. I've been to acting classes for mm -hmm. over 20 years and I have never had a teacher verbally abuse me mm -hmm. and scream at me and yell at me. And uh, he was saying it was to invoke emotion. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say that a good acting coach, if they notice Absolutely. that a technique is not working, if they notice that a technique is not working for an actress or an individual, like it's having the opposite effect. Mm -hmm. Like they're shutting down. They're getting traumatized. Like it's not doing what it's supposed to. Maybe use a different technique. Yeah. That would be a good acting coach or a good director. And I've had the privilege of working with wonderful directors, like the best directors, where if they need something out of you, they can get it without being verbally abusive. Right. Or sneaking it on you like that, like any sort of scene like that where it's not a consensual thing, like I'm going to yell at you, I'm going to do this, like not telling you or asking your permission beforehand. It's like, that's not acting. That's not directing. That's not anything. That's no. Abuse. He reminded me of an abusive ex-boyfriend hmm. that I dated. And... His behavior was the same, and he was like, it's acting, it's not real. His being, he's just like a very hot-headed, angry guy, and so for him to jump to anger, all the, it's so easy for him. I don't think it's acting for him. I think it's just who he is, um, and I just don't appreciate being verbally abused. They literally pulled her aside on camera and had him yell at her specifically. Whereas everyone else, they had them the partner girls with act another together, actress. But one he of the literally girls. signaled wow. her out because I think he didn't like how nice she was and was just verbally abusing her on camera. Wow. And could see, were you visibly uncomfortable at this point? Like how deep into it were you? Yeah, I was really uncomfortable. So uh, it was hard for me not to cry because mm -hmm. he was supposed to be teaching us how to play a villain or how to play a bad guy. Mm -hmm. And the secret with playing a villain is that one, you're multidimensional and two, you don't see yourself as a villain. You, you, and, and villains have fun with it. Mm -hmm. He was not teaching me any of that. He mm -hmm. was just verbally abusing me and yelling at me. And I was just trying not to break down. He was just trying to get a reaction out of me for camera, mm -hmm. uh, just trying to break me. And you know, some some mm. people do believe in like breaking an actress down and then rebuilding them. There was no rebuilding on this show. This was just for. Yeah, this is also like a reality show with new actresses that they don't know that they haven't worked with. It's right. not something that's right. Did you were you playing along with it or did you you just shut down? I shut down. Mm. I went numb because that's mm. how I respond to abuse. I just go numb. And this and then. So he's, and then that's when he's doing the one-on-one -on -one with you and there, right. and no one's stopping it. How long did it no go on one, for? No one stopped it. And they aired mm. just a little snippet of it, but 
it just wouldn't end. And I think that they didn't like me. They didn't like that I wasn't drama. I wasn't talking badly about the other girls. I was actually doing a lot of conflict resolution in the house. And I don't think that that was what they wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and it almost felt like a punishment that I wasn't doing what they wanted mm -hmm. in the interviews. So I was singled out and I had to go partner with John and just be screamed and yelled at. It was awful, and I didn't learn one thing. That did not make me a better actress. Mm -hmm. It made me not want to act anymore because I thought in my head, is this what acting coaches are right. like in Hollywood? Like, is this what, they what go it's through. like? Mm -hmm. No. The answer is no. That is not normal. That is not okay. Um, I've been to so many acting classes. I've worked with so many coaches afterwards, including James Gunn's friend, who are amazing and brilliant and supportive and helpful and pulled the best out of me and got me to a place where I'm booking gigs on NCIS. Like that is, that's good coaching. Yeah. And there's so many different techniques. There's like miser, there's um, method acting. Right. I couldn't tell you what John Homa's technique was other than just being abusive. A really great outlet for him to be entertaining and scream and yell at us and scare the shit out of us. The other girls would call it intense. That was the word they used. Ugh. Oh, he's a really intense coach. I've had intense coaches. Yeah. I grew up as an athlete. I did varsity soccer all four years of high mm -hmm. school and varsity gymnastics, went to state. I had intense coaches. That was not coaching. Yeah. That was just verbal abuse. Absolutely. And even the the class, the first class where they're smashing the pumpkins was like super physically dangerous. dangerous it was too. really dangerous. And no because one helped. There was no stunt. Was no, there a stunt like, coordinator? Uh, Roll have to remind me. I'm horrible with names. But one of the gals they showed Sarah, first, her, she, her she arm already was already broke injured. Broke or sprained her wrist. Wow. Like how do you injure yourself and all you've done is one acting challenge and then this class she's already injured wow and that's they, the other thing yeah safety on set was in nothing there was no like no. medical assistance sarah got hurt the very first day mm. and so the second day you can see when we're um in the first acting class she has a bandage around her hand because yeah she got hurt in the first wow and then when they were smashing the pumpkins they even show a clip of it like all the girls are sitting right at ground level where all the debris is like flying as they're hitting the pumpkin. Wow. And literally they're trying to hide behind pillows because they're getting hit in the face. I was nervous things. because they had a tarp down because they didn't want to get the ground messy for us <laughs> smashing these pumpkins. And it was really slippery because like pumpkin guts, you right, know, because yeah. we played with the pumpkins. <laughs> they get like really slimy and slippery. Yeah. And uh, they didn't tell us like, hey, everyone wear tennis shoes every or like put pads on our knees or something like that. I was in heels and jeans and, and trying to and and trying to and I was scared a girl would lose grip of the bat and it would hit us. I mean, there was no barrier. It was just I air, all these things were just really unsafe and they didn't need to be. Right. Pick up the debris between each shot, so each girl went. And it, it kept got getting messier slipperier and, messier. and oh slipperier. Gosh. And there's no there reason for that. They literally have smash rooms that you can go to to get rage out. Like, why right. not go to a fun yeah, smash, smash room? Yeah, smash room would have been like, better. That's just yeah. good production. And they have like, uh, eye protection, you know, protection yeah. when you go to a smash room so you don't get things in your eyes. And they they just... This is also a Lionsgate film sponsoring this, like, show. Like, their production, this is what they do. They do resets all the time. That's, that's so insane. Was there... Was there a psychologist? You said there was a psychologist at the beginning before you went in. Were they on set with you guys as well? I'm not sure if one hung out. I'm trying to think because it was so long ago. I cannot remember because I did not check in with them. I remember just thinking I didn't feel safe. I didn't feel comfortable. I wanted to go home. I wasn't sleeping. We had no privacy going mm -hmm. to the bathroom. So the loft was one big room for our bedroom where they had all 10 of our beds. And then the bathroom was in the same room. It was just one big open space where they had sinks, a tub, a shower, and a toilet. There's no door. There's no curtain. It was just oh open. Gosh. So you would have to poop in front of everyone. You'd have to shower in front of everyone. And I remember when we were coming back from um, the first acting challenge, we were walking back into the warehouse and fake house. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> that's wild with no heat. Wow. Don't give me. Uh. So the house they show on the outside, you guys never went in? No, I don't even know wh whose house that was. Never wow. seen that house. Well, in the edit, the little, you, if you look at the ceiling, 
thing. It's literally you like can warehouse see all the vents, air conditioning, like the warehouse, warehouse rafters. vents and rafters. Wow. Yeah, but they're showing some nice Mediterranean, yeah. like Beverly Hills mansion. Yes, I remember those. They showed them on like Rock of Love and stuff, and you're like, oh, that's such a nice house. And those girls got to stay in a house. They had the mansion with the stairs and the staircase and yeah, all the bedrooms. Yeah, every reality show is different, so that's why I really was confused because uh, every reality show is different. They have different rules, but here we weren't allowed to go outside. There was no windows, so in the loft. So it was kind of, it was really disorienting because you never knew what time of day it was. We weren't allowed our phones. So we didn't know what time it was. We mm. weren't allowed phone calls. We weren't allowed to just go outside, get fresh air and an exercise. Uh, for me, for my mental health, I like to go on a walk every day. Yeah, I like to go on a walk or a jog and they didn't even bring in a treadmill. I tried nothing. nothing. So we aren't getting exercise. We can't read. We can't um, listen to music. Nothing we can do is to help us de-stress or refocus. You know, it's designed that way to watch us lose it. It's not designed to help us as actors. But I'm surprised that this particular one, it makes sense with like Survivor, Big Brother, those kind of things, because they don't want outside information, but it's not affecting your guys' act. Like an acting challenge, you're not going to, outside information won't affect that. So it's odd they wouldn't let you communicate with your family. Like yeah. Because, like, love is blind. They can communicate with their family. They can do all that stuff. So it's very interesting that they wouldn't yeah. let you. And the whole thing sounds almost all psychological, like, in a way, like, it was meant to be that way. You're in a warehouse. You have no privacy. You're going to bed late. You're waking up early. Then on top of it, you have these not only men on camera, like the acting coach, like, berating you, but then, like, producers off camera. Was it a male asking you about your breasts? I can't even remember. So it's, like, I literally, I it. there's so many things that I think my brain locked out locked out because they were so bad and it's just not normal I've yeah. like I've said I've been on so many sets in the last 15 years and nothing was as bad as this and I was talking to Mike and I said I might be being dramatic but I would have rather gone to prison for two weeks than live in that wow. warehouse again for two weeks because at least in prison you get to go outside yeah. you get to exercise and you get a phone call yeah like, yeah. And, and there's so many shows where maybe even the conversations that you don't have are maybe they're not private. Like if I, I want to call my mom or, yeah. you know, um, maybe the conversation isn't private, but you can still check in with your family. Yeah. Um, I remember because we filmed over the holidays, we filmed over Thanksgiving and even into Christmas. Wow. And um on Thanksgiving, we, they weren't filming that day. You know, crew got, I think, the day off. So they, um, I remember them releasing an article where they were like, oh, we're so sweet. We let them watch movies all day. We brought in a big Thanksgiving meal. And I'm oh like, my. you got Boston Market <laughs> and you weren't filming. So wow. it's not like you were doing us a huge favor. Why? Why do they do that? And that was the only meal meal we got. Oh I mean, the rest God. of the time, if you wanted food, you had to write it on a board and wait for a PA, maybe, if they would go out and get it. And most of the time, they didn't. I remember one time for dinner, there was no food. I just had gummy bears. No way. Uh, one time, I had Cheerios because there was mm. nothing in the house. And it's but the not bar, union. The bar is fully stocked. <laughs> to drink. Yeah. Did a lot of girls do that where you guys they encouraged, they encouraged us it? to yeah. and I did not. Uh I didn't participate because I was there to act. I was there to do the challenges. I was there to compete that way. And um they just kept pushing us. They also wanted us for a shot for ratings to be in the hot tub in our bikinis. Wow. At no point where <laughs> we wanted to go outside in the freezing cold and get in this lukewarm inflatable. <laughs> inflatable hot tub. Where was it in relation to the warehouse? Were you guys on the same outside? Same floor. And then you just walk out this door. <laughs> there's curtains because there's no front door. You walk out the curtains and onto this little, you know, like a, a rooftop kind of thing that where they've laid down fake grass oh and my God. this inflatable. Look it, it looks like the cheapest set you've I ever haven't seen. seen. I don't remember because I, I rewatched parts of it. I haven't seen. They it. have it on YouTube. You should rewatch it and look yeah. at it, knowing what it actually is. I'm so and going it to. It stands out like a sore thumb. It's so it's so bad. I do remember a season two being in general a lot more like the girls wearing like sexier clothes and just being a lot more like sexual than the first, which is kind of odd, especially with the Saw movie. The horror girls aren't necessarily provocative and oh, stuff and like that. That's how they start the show is saying horror is mostly sexy and a little bit scared. Which like is they like, said that they said that yeah. like 10 times in the first episode. They kept drilling it into our heads. You need to be sexy and terrified. It's sexy and mm. fear. And then one of my friends on the show, Sierra, she was like, okay. So she heard be sexy, be sexy, be sexy. So she 
kind of overdid the sexiness and then they berate her. Right. And, and I'm yep. like, okay, so you, she's doing exactly what you've told mm -hmm. them and you're berating her. So in my acting scenes, which you don't see, right. um, you, you <laughs> see two seconds of <laughs> uh, clip. It's what um, a bummer. I tried to pull back immensely because it, she was being berated for going too far sexy. So I was going more fearful and just trying to keep it grounded and realistic. Yeah. Um, and the other thing with the bathrooms is when we were coming back in from the challenge, I saw a video village that we weren't supposed to see. And I knew that there was hidden cameras throughout the house. It's a reality show. Mm -hmm. Duh. I didn't expect there to be no cameras in the house. And then you have the live crew and you know when they're there because they're live. They're right, right in front of you. But what I didn't expect and made me feel really uncomfortable and so creepy was because the bathroom was open, they had cameras on the shower and the toilet. What? And it's and I said, this is weird. And I remember the producers saying, well, don't worry because we can't air it on oh VH1. Gosh. We can't air <gasps> you in the shower. We can't air you on the toilet pooping. So oh. don't worry about it. I'm like, yeah, but... you." Your whole crew is watching. Wow. You vocalized so, it. So, yeah. And they were. Mm. The whole crew was, mm. the crew could watch us shower. The crew could watch us take a poop. If you had to change a tampon, there's no door. Wow. There's So, you know, that reminds me of prison because in prison <laughs> cells that I've seen, they have the bed and there's an open toilet. There's no door. You know, it's open. I and it's it's and you're just, all females like it's crazy. Yeah, and what does filming us taking a poop or showering? <laughs> how does that make us better actors? No, it's obviously there was obviously more to this than would ever be out there because I've never heard that ever. But I guess you saw something that you weren't supposed to see. I guess people maybe they do this now and people don't know. I mean that's the thing with these. I feel like in the contracts, I don't know if you ever looked at yours, but maybe it says like we can film anything and everything. Like you sign your life away basically, right? Yeah. So, it's just creepy because yes. they presented the show as actresses doing acting mm. challenges. Yeah, you're living together. There's a little drum. Um but what I really think the show missed the mark is I love the premise and I love the people. I just wish that they would have done a totally different editing take because real drama occurred naturally mm -hmm. when you have 10 women living together who all want the same role yeah. so badly. There was real fights that happened. There was real heart to hearts that happened that I found so much more genuine and they were real. I mean, it was... It was gutting some of these things, and that never saw the light of day. They wanted bikinis and drunk girls and apparently to watch us shower. Um, wow. It just was so creepy and awful, and I didn't want to shower, and I, I eventually had to because I'm living there for over two weeks. Like, So I did have to shower, but I didn't want to because mm. there's no privacy. What did you do? Were you like, did you just take a robe in with you just trying to cover yourself like all the time once you found out? Cause I don't think I could, once I found that out, I don't know if I could even stay. I cannot remember if I had a swimsuit on or if I just did it. Cause I was like, it's time. Got a stinky butt. Time to wash this little butt. Time to go. <laughs> well, um, what kept you there? What kept you there? I didn't want to be there anymore. I think I felt like I was trapped like I had signed a contract and there was no way to get out of it. And I didn't have a car, which is part of the reason they pick you up and drive you. So you don't have a vehicle to even get home. This is before Uber. You don't have your phone. Mm. You don't have a way to get out. You don't you know where you're feel at. feel trapped. Yeah. They should have just filmed the Saw movie right then. Yeah, we could <laughs> have just Honestly. filmed the Saw movie but there. That's a real horror movie. I mean, that really is. That's... Because it is one of those things, it's like it's such a psychological torture, all of it, especially with people like the acting coach in charge, like, a, you know, he's also the one doing this to you and like abusing you as if it's like a real life horror film, as if this is like, it's very bizarre. It's very weird that they got away with it. Have you spoken with other girls from the show? Have they... Yeah, I kept in touch with a bunch of the girls after the show. We actually hung out a bunch for months and months after the show. And then uh, a handful of them went went back home. They're from different states. And a few are still uh, acting in, in, in entertainment today. Wow. Uh, so that's really cool to see, and I'm really proud of them. And I feel like they did that despite of being mm -hmm. on the show, not because of it. Of course. I really, I and I try to find positive things in every experience. Um, and the only positive thing is that I love the people. I know for a fact that I really love acting. Um, and, but I, uh, 
everything else was just traumatizing. And I think it did more damage than it did good. And for a long time, I thought, well, maybe I'm just not the best at competition reality shows because... <laughs> well, that one will... That's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm not... I don't like to get in fights and stuff, and I just... It's just not for me. So uh, I understand that that may be boring to a producer, but they really didn't even focus on my strengths. And I'm just tired of people editing me to look worse than I am because they don't like that I'm so nice. Right. Like, they're annoyed that I'm nice, so they edit me to look like I, I freeze on set and I can't act. Or, And the same thing kind of I felt like maybe happened on Mr. Beast. Like, that was weird, too. So this is interesting. So you were on three of Mr. Beast Challenge, which is like – you're kind of that girl that gets involved in all these shows. Like, you were on Escape the Night twice. You're doing all these shows. You're friends with Joey, so that makes sense. Are you friends with Mr. Beast? And he's just like, hey, you want to come do this show? Or how does that work? We started uh, talking a little bit, and I really am someone who gets really excited about other creators. I get excited for people. I get excited for friends. I get excited for... And he was just blowing up, and he was making all this really cool content, a lot of... Uh, for philanthropy work, right? Sure. Like helping you, others. Philanthropy. Philanthropy. Oh, philanthropy. Maybe have chosen a more difficult to say. <laughs> words. Yeah. like charity work. Yeah, like, like, like philanthropic. Like, like you help people. You. Yeah. Okay, you got it. You, you got it. I didn't know that. I was so excited because I was like, I know what you're saying, but I don't know. Just nod and smile. Just nod yeah, and smile. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just like a huge fan of all those efforts. I thought it was so cool, like planting all the trees, yeah. the ocean cleanup. Um, so when he reached out for me to be on Creator Games, I was on one, two, and three. The first two were digital because it was during COVID times. Oh, wow. Uh, those two games. And I had a blast. I had so much fun. Uh, and then when I got invited to do the third one, it was at the SoFi Stadium. So it was the first one in wow. person. And we did like a major hide and seek um, uh, and challenge game. And it was over 24 hours. We were up for, I think I was up over 30 hours straight. Wow. I didn't sleep. Yeah, I think the challenge was around 24, but you know, you wake up before you're there. So yeah. you were all up for longer. Oh my God, and, straight? Yeah, and I'm just confused what happened there. Again, I didn't get involved in any of the drama. I didn't, I was nice to everyone. And they edited me out like midway through the video. The thing that I didn't understand and I'm still confused today and it hurt my feelings is like when Mr. Beast talks about these creator games and challenges, he said, you know, it's all in good fun. Like audience, don't take it too serious. All of the money that's won is donated, mm -hmm. you know, it's given away. So it's, we, we can just have some fun with it. And I was like, yeah, that's really cool. Um, and so when it aired, when the video came out, my friends were like, what, what happened? Really? Because they, you weren't in it. They had me get eliminated like somewhere in the middle. And I was really proud of myself because I'm not mean and competitive. You know, I just yeah. go out there and do my best. And I actually beat other creators who are super, a lot of male creators who are super competitive. They're very talented. Like these are big creators. And so I was proud of myself that I had accomplished that. And they edited me out somewhere in the middle when really I was top three. Wait, what? And in, in the How? edit... They have like, okay, top three is Larry and um, Logan Paul and Zach King. They weren't top three. I beat Logan Paul. What? Yeah. So who were the top three with you? So it was it was really interesting. So when we did we did challenges, cut it down to I think ten of us or something. Yeah. And so then he they did all in one day, but he released his two videos. So the first video. You do all these challenges, and if you win the challenge, you go on to the next round, which is the big hide-and-seek. And so Ro won one of the challenges. She beat out everybody, so she made it to the hide-and-seek part. So, yeah, I think they got rid of half. I, I can't remember exactly. I think it was they got rid of half in the first one, and then the finalists And there wasn't the a lot half. of girls left. Did they reshoot this stuff? How are they editing you out when you got so far? Did they, like, reshoot with Logan? I don't think so. No, either. no. They I think they just spliced it. The, it's just the way they edit it. They... Because it's just a bunch of footage of people by themselves. So you can kind of edit it in any order you want, as long as you shoot around different people not being in the background when they shouldn't be to tell your story. And so on this one, they made it to where Logan was number two. And they said, oh, what? we found him one minute before we found Zach King, who did actually technically win. Uh, you can talk about <sighs> that a little bit. But they're like, but no, they had found him hours ago. And like Roe made it further than they showed in the edit. 
I mean, was top three, so that was very confusing. So when I'm watching what? it, they had Logan, Zach King, and Larry be top three. But Larry fell asleep, so he was disqualified. Because one of the rules oh in the game was that it, every time Mr. B said to move locations, you had to move. And if you got caught in transition moving, then you're caught. Um, and you had to move or you're you just couldn't stay. disqualified. Because like, there's like six you, floors or seven or whatever. Huge right. stadium, and he was so saying, okay, no one on floor seven anymore. So anyone on seven has to go down. Had to move down. So if or, you are on a high floor and you fell asleep, you get eliminated because you're not moving. Right. Wow. So I, I followed all the rules, good sportsmanship. I tried really hard and I was top three. And so it was so weird to see the video and they're like, oh, these three guys are top oh three. And I felt so like, wh- what? Did you, did you ask him? Did you email anybody about this? Are you like, like you should have at least said like, what happened? No, you know me, I don't say anything. I take all my feelings and I shove them down into my <laughs> little <it> toes <laughs> and I never talk about have it. Some whiskey. And I have some whiskey mm-hmm. and I move on. Speaking of whiskey, Logan Paul and I, um, he was so sweet. I have to say that when we we were doing the creator games together um, and worked together, he was kind to everybody on set. Yeah, Logan's great. The whole crew, he introduced himself to everybody. He was friendly to everybody. Yeah. He even took me aside, and we did a shot of whiskey together. Oh. Um, he had great sportsmanship. He didn't cheat. Uh, it was just really a pleasure to work with him. Yeah. It, it was a it was a great experience that way. And and I didn't know what to expect. I had never worked with him before, and I was pleasantly surprised then. And I I was I don't want to say disappointed that nobody said like, "Hey, Ro made it to top three. What's going on publicly?" Like no one said anything. But I also it's not on them to call somebody out or it's not I just did they see did they did other people see you or just the top three saw you obviously or like when people were eliminated were they sent home you could go home I think if you wanted to but a bunch of people hung around um like Matt Pat hung around because it was a long I, like I think the day went longer than anybody expected yeah and, yeah um they really did I will say as far as like the timing it took to find people they didn't cheat that in any way so like literally it went long and they just let it go long they didn't try and like rush it so people are exhausted like hour 23 24 25 26 Damn. some people are yeah. like i'm i'm leaving <laughs> i'm literally they just gonna quit. leave yeah oh wow yeah. so some people left but ro is very like I'm... i agreed to do it i'm gonna help you and anytime we film with our friends we do it for free like she goes on try guys all the time yeah and we're like don't even talk to us about money we're not gonna do it we just want to yeah. support and so the same thing with that like ro's gonna be there until she, it's done. You guys are punctual, professional. You guys show up to everything. Like your own sets are like I that. You're very that person. I love being on set and yeah. I love creating things. So I, I'm just such a supporter and I'm, and I, and I was so happy to be there and I was like just giving it my all. And I was just so heartbroken when the video was released because it made me feel like I wasn't good enough. I understand, you know, like uh, Logan has such a huge following and he's literally a professional wrestler and that like I I get it, but it just made me feel like uh, that you're not enough. And it's it just it didn't feel good. Yeah, it it, it really. um, It's it's very disrespectful. It's very disrespectful, especially when he just says that it's all in good fun and it doesn't matter who wins because it's all going to be donated and given away. Like, why would you edit me out? And I beat Logan Paul. I survived hide and seek longer. And he even said something cute, like, you're never going to find Ro. She's so small. This place is so big. Like, she's the one to beat. Like, yeah. this is, and I'm good at hide and seek. That's my game. <laughs> I'm good at it. And And what a story, you know, you're this tiny girl and nobody would expect it. And I think just in general, like equality, gender equality. Yes. If it naturally didn't happen where three guys win, that's one thing, but there's a woman who yeah. beat out Logan Paul, who is a crazy athlete and amazing. And I think that alone is such a story. And why... I was just so proud of myself. Yeah. And I told my mom, I was mm. like, Mom, you won't believe it. Like, oh. <laughs> how did this happen? I was oh. so excited. And then when the video came out, I was just felt so low. I felt, oh, my God. <sighs> and I think it's similar to the mm. same thing on Scream Queens. Is like with producers, they are bad at telling a different story than the one they already want. And yeah. so it's they it's just bad producing. When the the story that actually happened is better than yeah. what they produced. 
Yeah, pretty much. It was so weird. And a little tea about the winner. So Zach King won. And we love um, Zach. And I we, love yeah. Zach. We love Full him. disclosure. You love all the people I on the show. Yeah. Him, and he's got the cutest little babies. Yeah. And I have I have a soft spot. But we signed a contract with like the stadium and YouTube saying that if you're going to hide, hide and seek, you had to hide in places that were like uh, safe and like plain sight Easily places. Easily accessible. They said, oh. like, for example, like in the lounge, <laughs> they have couches. You know, like you can't take a knife and cut open the couch <laughs> and climb in there. Yeah. Like that one episode of Sunny in Philadelphia with Danny DeVito <laughs> yes. when he's like hiding in the couch. Like, and they even gave an example on the document. I remember it so clear that said, said on the field, there's like a two foot tall fence to separate the field and where the coaches or whatever would be. And they were literally like, don't even jump over this two foot tall fence. You have to walk around yeah. it for safe. Like, and I remember oh. that so clearly it's just calling out this little fence that like wouldn't keep a chihuahua. In. Right. Like, yeah. And they're like, don't. So the rules were very like. Be place. safe. Don't do anything weird. Don't yeah. damage the property. They said, don't go into the air ventilation. Like, don't go in the ceiling. <laughs> and so I didn't. You know, I'm going to follow the rules because this is a game. So yeah, it's not for fun. fun. <laughs> it's not fun if people are cheating. Yeah. And so Zach King, his final spot was in the ceilings. He went where they said not to go. Where the they said not layer. to go, mm-hmm. and it did a ton of damage. And there was ceiling droppings all over the floor from uh, where he had climbed around. And Matt Pat was literally like, "I think he's got to be here because look at all this damage." And I did see two maintenance workers working in one of the lounges. So I said, "You know what? I did see some maintenance guys. Maybe they're working on the ceiling." Oh. And he was like, "I just don't think so." And Matt was right. I mean, he Zach had there. gone in the ceiling, so technically that was cheating. Right. In our contract, but yeah, Rose should have got and, second because Larry. Yeah, I would have gotten second. Uh, fell Larry asleep. fell asleep. Zach, Zach went in the ceiling, King and then the one with guy the I think did beat you. Who? Ducky. Quick, quick. What is his? Why do I call him Ducky? I, 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 Ducky. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Who's Ducky? <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna look up his name really quick just to make okay. sure. <laughs> I, I, we've never hung out before, okay. so I had, that was the first time I was meeting him, and I, I, I don't think I remembered his name correctly. <laughs> Duck Quacky Ducky. Wait, is it Quacky? It's I'm going to look it up, because on, they only put that poor man in the video for, like, two seconds, so he probably got done dirty, too. Wait, but really? <laughs> but he was, like, top four with you guys? Uh. He was, I think um, he got third in the edit. I'm trying to remember. Zach. Quackity. 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 Thank you, Michael. Thank Ducky's you, Michael. Ducky's cute, though. <laughs> Ducky, same, Quackity, yeah. Same family, same family. Same family. <laughs> what a great name. What's Quackity do, I wonder, on YouTube? I don't know him. I know. Isn't that cute? I love it. It's I love the these names. It's cutest name ever. Yeah, people come so, up with really creative creative names. Yeah. I'll have to lay it out. I'm going to draw it out, Trisha, because I'm going to get it like, I'm, is... I'm going to draw it out so you can How see. How come you never, you never said anything where you're just like, I don't want drama, I don't want... I mean, it's I not think drama. It's what's not... important to me is being easy to work with, being fun to work with, and friendships. And I think I value those things so much. I value them more than sometimes my own well-being. Yeah. Um, and I've had a habit over the years, and I've kind of mentioned it to you like in the first act of my life. It's hard being young because you're learning your boundaries, you're learning who you are, you're learning what you want to be. And there's a lot of trial and error. And I feel like I really want to be a good person, like a a good friend. I want to be a good like coworker. And so I will, I realize in the first act of my life, I would just eat it. Because it's easier for you to be the like, I'm easygoing. and, And that's what people know you as. Because I didn't want people to be mad at me and I didn't want people to dislike me um, by being honest. Yeah. But I don't think it's helping anyone to, like, lie about it. I don't think that it's helping anybody. And it's dealing with the backlash, too. Like, you know, right. she was an unknown actress. What are you going to do? Go up against a huge production company. Yeah. And Mr. Beast is the same way. If you have a bad experience, everyone just says, well, you're jealous or, oh, this or, oh, that or don't Lying do it or, oh, or, that. Yeah. And then you can immediately have 100 million people harassing you all of a sudden. Yeah, you that's can hard be, part. like, cyber bullied if I say anything that's not positive about Mr. Beast. Mm-hmm. I I just I, – I already take so much privately that taking it also publicly – It's just a lot. Too much. It's a lot of crap to take Mm -hmm. that I shouldn't have to. Yep. Um, And that's when I actually stopped watching Mr. Beast's content because he always in interviews says the thing about him is he keeps it real. Like he really 
you know, gives away these cars. He really gives away all this money. It's real. It's real. It's real. It wasn't real. I was top three and he edited it to be all men. It was, I just can't, I don't fathom it. I don't understand why. I don't understand why. The all story, I know is that it felt awful. And it's not even popularity. You're up there. I don't, I mean, I don't, I truly don't know the other two. I know Logan. I don't know the other two. So, I mean, you're up, you're one of the biggest, you're mainstream. You have what, like 15 million subscribers, maybe more. And it's just like, so it's not a popularity thing. And even if that's the case, you think they would let you know in some way? I don't know. It's just yeah. very, and you never, and they never reached out to you. No, no one told and you this is the edit. No, and it's just not very genuine. So if if it isn't genuine, being upfront about that is the way to go. Mm-hmm. But he's saying that it is genuine and that's not what happened. And now I'm like, ah. Hmm. And you and something that you just put so much of your time in, like you said, you're not like getting paid to do this. You're not whatever. You're like putting time into it. It's I show you're proud up of. because I'm excited for another creator. I yeah. want to support them. I put my all into it, and then you just feel like crapped on, and you feel like, I yeah, I feel like um, I don't like I don't try to compare myself to other creators. I really, um, when I was a gymnast, I kind of got in this mindset where you're on a team, but you're by yourself. Like mm-hmm. when you compete, you're by yourself. So I'm always pushing myself to be my best self. And I'm not worried about what other people are doing around me, how they're performing, because their performance does not affect my performance. Mm-hmm. And if someone genuinely beats me, beats my score because they killed it, then good for them. Right. They killed it. You know, I know that on my best day when I'm shining 10 out of 10, I'm going to kill it. So it's weird that I don't feel competitive with other people. I don't feel, and I just feel like there was like a ranking order. Mm -hmm. And that just feels like crap. Yeah, like you weren't good enough for whatever reason, which doesn't make sense at all logistically. As far as followers, as far as what you actually did, your endurance, like that's one of the most bizarre things I've ever heard, especially with such a big creator, especially with another YouTube creator. Lionsgate's one thing to do it to a small actress, but creator to creator, it's very bizarre. And that's really weird. And do people ever ask you about it? Like, oh, what's like, obviously you've done so much with Mr. Beast. Do they ever, like your fans ever ask you? Well, I've always been supportive. I'm still supportive yeah. when he launched uh, the chocolate bars the and um, all the other projects, even um, <laughs> called releasing the uh, those gummies, Mike. Um, because I, I genuinely like supporting people. I just don't understand why the support doesn't come back. And like, also, why are you, it just feels icky and it kind of felt like a boys club Mm -hmm. very much. And I mean, it is, that's what it was. I haven't been around another creator that made me feel like it was a boys club and then I wasn't welcome. And Mr. Beast of all people, if Logan is like, you know, you would think that about Logan or Jake, but like Mr. Beast, who's supposed to be family friendly and also just very open for everyone. Like that's that's the most shocking and yeah, it'd be the most hurtful thing. Yeah. Because you think he's not like that. I'm so sorry. I literally don't even know. It, it's just well, so weird. I mean, it's something that is still affecting you. I mean, both of these things, you know, it's like it still affects you and as much as you can go about your life and you do, you know, you're always very happy and upbeat. I mean, this is something that's will it happen again? You know, you put yourself out there for someone else and it like keeps happening. It keeps happening. What do you do, you know, to stop it or other people to stop it? It's just not, it's just not fair. It's not right. And it happens. And misogyny is so, I used to not think of it. I used to be like, you know what? No, it's not, it's 2023. Women are treated the same, but they're just not. (laughs) And even someone at your level with your, all your credentials, all your fame and following, if that's happening to you, you know, it's happening to so yeah. many other people, creators and non-creators and just women in general. And I think I'm tired of being quiet about it mm. because I think that's how it continues. Yeah. I think that people keep treating people poorly because they aren't speaking up and addressing it and saying something. And I think it's important to be open and honest about your experiences. And I don't ever want to like say things to hurt people. That's never my intention. I want to be truthful in my experiences and be honest when I get hurt. Um, and I just, I've, I have not done that for years and years and it's just taken a toll on me, I think. Um, Ugh, woof. <laughs> no, when, when you speak, and I mean this just genuinely and like sincerely, when you do speak about things, 
people listen to you because you're not drama. You've never been someone to just talk about random people or take little events, you know? So I think your voice is 10 times more powerful than most people's because you don't speak up on too many things. So when you do speak, it's like, whoa, this is real, you know? Yeah. And I know there's other instances in the past too where you've spoken up on other people's behalf and then people are finally like, oh no, this is the truth because Ro never speaks up and she's speaking up about this. So I think your voice is one of the most important ones because of that, especially with stuff like this. And the way you talk about it, it's not negative. You still have so much love for like Mr. Beast and all these people and even the uh, Lionsgate, the Scream Queens and stuff like that. So it comes out of a place of like truly just like the way you speak and the way you deliver this message is like people listen, you know, it's not emotional. It's not coming from. Yeah, it's not coming from like trying to hurt someone. It's just expressing my experience and like how it made me feel. And I didn't really, I've never done that. It's so important. And it's so, I'm almost in shock. I'm just like in shock through all this because I see you as someone who's just, everyone's just like that you're in charge of everything, that you're in control of everything. And to be so out of control of this and in these situations and it, I don't know, it just makes me feel some type of way because if this is happening to you, like, of course it's going to happen to a lot of other women yeah. and it really sucks. And it's taken you, you're 38, and it's like you're, you know, you're just talking about this stuff now for the first time. And, yeah. And, unfortunately, it's just when does it change? How does it change? You know, what is – I? that's, like, the answers I never know. Yeah. I feel like talking about it definitely helps. Mm-hmm. And I really hope that people understand that I've been asked these questions for so long, and I've just held it in Um because even my girlfriends, they were like, I thought you got third place at the Creator Games because mm. I texted them. Oh. oh, my gosh. I was out of my mind. I hadn't slept in like 30 hours. And I was like, you guys, guess what I did? Oh my I gosh. didn't win, but. Oh. <laughs> and so when it came out, they were like, what the F? Like, why weren't you top three? Oh. And I was like, I, I don't. I genuinely, I like, I genuinely don't know. You just let it go. You just just were like, I can't do anything about it. I would have. I would have had to say something. I could have. I, I mean, now you are. But what did you say, Mike, when that happened? Because it, <laughs> uh, men, you you know, are like you are very sweet. But you know, Mike is very your person. He helps you schedule things, and he's very yeah. It's just tough. It's. I think it's really upsetting because you're just helping your friend. Like, it, like all Ro cares about is being people's friend. That's literally all she wants to do. Mm-hmm. And so I think it hits extra hard when it's like you're doing people a favor, you're going all in and they can't even just treat you with like the basic respect of like, this is what you did and we're going to show it. And yeah, add a, add some transitions, add some text, add some explosions, add whatever to make it interesting. Yeah. But be a good enough producer to make the story that happened interesting. And right. like that, that's the part that is just constantly frustrating for me is that I, I recognize Rose talent. Like, After hanging out there for two days, Mm -hmm. I was like, you are going to be huge on YouTube. You need to do YouTube. Like, I don't see how people don't see that. And it still is so shocking to me, like how people treat her and whether it's producers, editors, writers, like directors, it's like, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills because it's like, it's so obvious to me. And so that's a big reason that we're building our own film studio at our house Mm -hmm. is because we can be in full control of everything and we don't have to rely on people's what their ideas are of a good story. Yeah. We can tell our own stories and that's, yeah, it, it more, instead of us, like me calling the producer and yelling at them, I think it's more productive to be like, we're never going to be in that situation again and we're going to build a better future and they don't deserve you. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's truly how, like this this is only like the snowflake on the tip of the iceberg of stuff Ro has been through. Oh my gosh. I have so many stories. Let me come back sometime. No, I know. (laughs) You talk about your, we talk about your music. Yes. We have uh, so much. Record, like, because we talk about record deals. I'm like, why don't you have a record deal? You know what I mean? That music industry is a whole other thing. And it is amazing. It is amazing that you stay so positive and like optimistic because I've been beaten down from things, but yours are, it is another level. It's another level where like nobody would know because you are just so happy, so optimistic. You keep going and it's, that's remarkable. And how you do it without ever going to therapy is, I don't know, a testament to your mental health, but I'm glad you're speaking up. I'm glad you're saying something because that's, again, people listen when it's you and you have such a big voice and those stories, those stories you tell are just so much more interesting than the stories that they produced. And 
I don't know. I just, I mean, you're you're the you're the it girl. You've been the it girl for so long. These guys, these productions, they don't see it. Like I told Moses the first time I met you, I was so nervous. I was so in awe. I was like, oh my god, like you don't understand. Like she's. You have hundreds of mil- two hundred million views on some videos. The nerdy nummies was life changing. You know that was the that changed YouTube. You got so many views. The most viewed. We, well, I read somewhere you were like on Forbes or was like the top paid YouTube. Yeah. Or like it was insane. You're you changed social media in so many ways with your production quality and everything. So it shocks me to hear all this. And I, a big part of it too. And like we we've pitched like when we first started on YouTube, we were pitching a lot of shows to different production companies and we we always told them we want a positive like it can be a competition food show but make it positive and fun and Mm -hmm. lighthearted. tell cool stories get like literally we got laughed out like literally laughed out of every single meeting where they literally would be like oh no we just signed with this person who's super trashy and like they've been to jail 10 times and like (laughs) we're like do you have anything like they literally this is a conversation that literally happened and then and that's like that's what we've wanted to make forever and then thank god finally uh great british baking show came to america so good. and everyone's like oh my god we love it it's positive and fun and lighthearted. it's like we literally have been trying yeah so thank god for them at that. least to yeah. show like you don't have to be vile you don't have to tell lies like just no. make a fun heartfelt story like people want that and i feel like with your stuff too like yeah. baketopia and even the hollywood the halloween cookie challenge i'm just like that's what people want to watch like lightheartedness because the world is so chaotic and so drama and crazy it's like and no even one baketopia, wants to watch it they wanted ro to be mean to like everybody what? and we're just really? like guys you don't it's bakers making cookies and they're like <laughs> cupcakes like they why am i gonna yell at, at someone show? who's making a cupcake like give me a break oh my gosh did you guys did you guys create that show the big topia were you just like a producer on it or i, I was an executive producer and it was a spin-off show a sister show of craftopia which uh laura diy mm-hmm. uh hosted yeah uh, uh with the same production company and then they wanted to make a baking version and brought me in on it and uh i got to do a lot of the creative i fought for a lot of things that they didn't have to have some more variety and move it into the 20, 21st, what century, century are we in? Right now. <laughs> what, what are we century in? are we in? Is it, is it uh, yeah. 21st or 20th? Yeah, 20th, 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 20th century Fox. Century. <laughs> 20, is it 21st century? <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like, you know what? Let's do, let's do a challenge where they have to make a vegan cake. And they were like, just one. And they were like, what? That, that took a month. Of and I'm like, a lot, of people, a lot of people eat vegan. Just try it. Just one challenge. One. And wow. Like, Which, to be fair, that show was awesome. And like. It was awesome. It, it, and they finally great. allowed I, it. I don't mean it in like a bad way, but it's just <laughs> They like, were great. Yeah. It's just like, no, you can be positive and fun. And they let her be positive and fun. But they were like pitching at first like well you have to be mean literally for the oh record God. every show i have ever been on other than scream queens has been a delight yeah it, even, they aren't even, even, even yeah. glee it was a little wild but it, i still had a great time <laughs> um but everyone was like professional and respectful and i felt safe and you know when you feel safe and you feel like you're you're in a professional environment, you can really have fun yeah. and you can really get into stuff when you feel that support. It's really hard to do that when you feel unsafe. It's, and yeah, it's a magical thing. I think it's like, and that's why I'd hate that people, but it's, it's also real because reality shows still do this. Like love is blind is being sued, but for starving their people allegedly. And you know, all the stuff that happens with that. So it's a very real thing, but it can be amazing and fun. That's why we're still here in LA. And that's why yeah. we do what you do because it's still fun. Like NCIS is amazing. Like the fact that seeing a YouTuber do stuff like that is, am- are you with an agency now? I am. I'm with WME. Oh my, the biggest. That's I have, so huge. Oh my gosh. I have been with them for 10 years no now. No way. So that's how you get these jobs. Yeah. Oh this is a, our 10 year anniversary. Anniversary. And we just signed, ah. she just signed with Three Arts. And I just signed with Three Arts Management, <laughs> which has a lot of comedians. And wow. um, we're working on a lot of projects right now that are in the works. Oh my so, gosh. Are you going to do more TV? Thing? Yeah, I do. I think <sighs> more TV and also maybe something musical. I, I'm not quite sure what I yes. want to do, but I love singing. And I decided in this second act of life, this next chunk from 30 to 60, I just want to perform more and have more fun. And and I also want to stand up for myself more. I think I want to, if I'm being mistreated or something really hurts my feelings, I want to be confident enough and courageous enough, brave enough to say that it does. Mm-hmm. 
um, even if it's difficult, even in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, I shouldn't speak up because I want people to, to like me and not be mad at me. I think that it's important as a woman in entertainment mm -hmm. to be honest about your experiences because if you aren't, that kind of behavior continues and will keep going underneath the radar. Yes. And that treatment is just going to perpetuate it. There's no stopping it if you don't address it. And it may risk losing work. But, you know, my my advice to any production company is don't be gross. Yeah, don't be gross. I was like, it's easy to I'm make. I'm so to easy be going. It's like... It, it, it's just bad production. Like don't be all that stuff you don't production. have to bad do. Producer. Like, yeah, if you go on naked and afraid, you're you're signing up for like <laughs> yeah. a horrible experience. But right. like a dating like show, a re like a competition show, you that's just bad producing. Yeah. You don't you don't know how to get good stories. Especially a lighthearted one. Mr. Beast is not about like drama or anything. That's right. very odd. It's very bizarre. Well, at least you're going back into like doing it yourself and creating your own stuff because that's where I think you flourish. The stuff that you guys do, your production quality of just like your YouTube videos, like the one we did, it was amazing. Like you guys have, Trish I told so Moses, sweet. like set and crew and production. I was just like, wow, this is, it was amazing. The clean, I mean, you had a reset crew on your YouTube video and they couldn't even do that at Screen Queens. You know what I mean? Each one. There <laughs> we was like pick up pumpkins faster than they yes, did. That's yeah, true. Every shot that's was like true. cleaning out pumpkins. I was like, wow, it was so like impressive. And the fact that you're building your own kitchen now and doing, but I I love the idea of you singing. I think, would you ever do like Broadway? Yeah. That's where I think you need to go. There's, oh my gosh. I miss it. I really just, I, I love performing. <sighs> I, 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 there's something about it that's really magical. It kind of reminds me just of my dad. Like he mm -hmm. loved music and he loved watching me perform. And that's something we used to do together. He used to play guitar and I would sing and oh. we would, and that's just how we hung out, how we bonded. So I, I feel like whenever I'm performing or I'm doing something musical, I just kind of like feel them with me. Yeah. And it feels really good. So I think we'll keep messing around with that. And I started mm. a comedy school. Uh, wait, what? So I'm taking improv and I'm no like a performance way. in a few weeks. No, wait, wait. Oh my God. Can yeah. like, people come? Can we come yeah. watch oh it? Oh my gosh, yes. And I'm going to I'm gonna write, I think, my first stand-up maybe. I, oh, I'm, I'm debating. I think I'm going to though. Stand-up I'm going to invite you to come. Oh, I love stand-up. Stand-up is wild. Stand-up is difficult, but how amazing. You'd I be have, so good. I have so many embarrassing stories <laughs> And my humor is like very self-deprecating, yeah. so I don't mind sharing all of yeah. them. And I think it's just going to be a different side of me that I get to let out into the world. I think that's going to feel really good. It's almost like therapeutic too, you know, because you have so many of these stories and you tell it with a smile, but you can tell it and people can laugh with you. And pain is sometimes funny. You know what I mean? When you can I make it funny. That. I yeah. got a lot of that. I a lot of that. Where you can like laugh at it and make it turn around. Yes. And I think that's the way to deal with it. I didn't tell you this before we started um, filming, but my sister says hi. Oh, love. I she maybe she'd come. I was she like, oh, wanted to, she but kids. she's running the running everything yes. today. She's literally holding holding down the fort and oh. running everything. But she was like, tell her I said I hi. Love her. My sister adores <laughs> Trish. I like, love her so She much. said you guys hung out uh, one time at a birthday party mm -hmm. and um, she was like, I love her. Oh my and gosh. I was like, okay. The minute we met, because uh, Malibu and Graham are like literally a month apart. And yeah, so like the minute literally. we met, she was the one person we knew at the, well, we didn't even know, but she's the one person that we talked to at the party. She like came up and was like, how old? And she, she's amazing. She told me, she said, you tell her I said hi. Uh, I said, okay. You you guys are great together. <laughs> did you guys have a show on Food Network? Was it Ro and Ma on Food Network or we was it? We did like um, these two hour long specials way back in the day on uh, cooking ch uh, Food Network's cooking channel. And it was like Rose Tasty Treats where we did one for October, like Halloween. Yeah. And then we did one for uh, Christmas and it was it was really fun. And they, they offered us a show afterwards because it performed uh, well. But yeah, the um, timing just wasn't right The timing us. wasn't great. We hadn't figured uh, out our, our system yet. So we were... We didn't have enough manpower to continue creating YouTube videos and do a TV show right. without skipping a beat. So yeah. I needed some time. But now we have have the team. We have the system where I can do tons of other projects and continue to do YouTube uh, at the same time. So now it's different. But no. yeah, so you were just I like, was not ready. And YouTube... I mean, back in the day, you could make so much money off YouTube. So, like, monetarily speaking, it made sense to stay on it. But I love that you're going to ride it because there's so many ups and downs with YouTube. Mine, too. Oh, and yeah, I feel like you just like ride this. it. <laughs> you're yeah. sticking with it. And I love it. I, I say the same thing. My main channel gets, like, 10,000 views. I'm like, but I love it. And I'll probably stick with it forever. Like, Me. I don't understand. <laughs> 
I'll be a grandma, literally Betty White age. I'll <laughs> yeah. be in my third act or my encore, still making grandma cookies. You're scooping out pumpkins, yep. testing out products, <laughs> which I think would be so great. But you did talk about doing a podcast, you said. Are you going to still do <gasps> yes. that? Because to me, I think that is kind of the wave of YouTube, hence why I started this. Everyone's doing it. Yeah. But you, you talk in real life more than, and in podcasts more than anyone I know, which is, but you're so entertaining. Like some people talk and talk and talk and you're just like, oh my God, but you just are so captivating, so entertaining. You talk to anyone and everybody. Everybody. You're the person at a party Well, you'll talk to like literally every single person, which is like amazing. It's such a gift. And so podcasting is your calling. Are you going to do it around, like, would you do guests, baking? I just got so many ideas. So when we're done with the film studio, I think it'll finish around Christmas. I think then we're going to start developing some ideas. I think I, I want to interview people. I think that'd be so fun, Mike, and we hang have, out like, with three people. three ideas that we're really excited about, so maybe we'll do them all. We'll yeah, see. Yeah, see I'm not sure what. First, I was going to tell you, I think, did I tell you the first time I ran into you and I was too scared to say hi because no. I looked ridiculous? Wait, where? Okay, so my sister was pregnant and she wanted to do this challenge where I was pregnant for 24 hours. So she bought me <laughs> oh this my like God. silicone. I like you remember? I know these challenges. Oh, no, we this never told before, you this. I don't think. No, this is before I, oh I kind of like met you a little bit up through Joey, like at, like at Joey's party. We yes. bumped into mm-hmm. each other a little bit at Joey's. Way, this way before. This. Wait, really? So I had this like big silicone fake pregnancy <laughs> belly on, and we were like ha- going around like running errands, <laughs> and um, I'm with my sister, and then oh, we were at the Grove. That's what, Mike, what? We were at the Grove, right? Yeah. We were at the Grove, and we were <laughs> shooting around there, and I saw you and I was like oh, Mike that's Trish and I was like she kind of looked like in a hurry I don't know what you it was you did look like you were I in a hurry I across the street so I was always like running oh, like yeah. that's what it felt like like you were just like zooming I got through. scared I got scared to go out by myself I'm very like yeah <laughs> And I was like, Mike, should I go say hi? And he goes, look at you. And I was like, oh, (laughs) yeah. So because I have this huge belly. And I'm like, I don't want the first time me introducing myself to you to be, oh, sorry, little hand. Uh, To be like, like, I'm in a fake pregnancy belly. Like Like, chasing you. I would have loved that. That would have been everything. That was the first time. And I was just Oh, my God. That's so funny. I I love it. I I love that it was at the Grove. I would have loved it because, like, you, especially, like, in the that era, like, you were just, you were, you're the, you were the queen of YouTube. You are the queen of YouTube. Like, oh, that's the, sweet. When I, you look at anything, the views, the production quality, everything you did, I was just like, wow, that's, like, amazing. Like, Trish is so sweet. I always thought that. I always thought that about you. I always thought, like, your content was, like, so superior. I always thought you were, too. And, and you have such a wholesome vibe. So you think... What I didn't know about you, which you shared earlier, you know, the way you grew up and stuff like that. So in my head, I think of you as like, oh, you're wholesome. You're very just like keep with your circle of friends, but you're very open minded. And you talked about this with just yeah. friends and stuff like that. You're like, I'm actually very open minded. If people tell me something, I'm not I'm the last person to judge, which yeah. is like not my perception of you just from YouTube. You know, I was like, well, she's in this elite group of YouTube and, you know, they probably don't want to talk to me and stuff like that. So you're very not at all. You're very open minded. Yeah. And Rose very like forgiving, very. too, if people are honest and very un- like when they were trying to cancel James Gunn for like a 10 year old tweet and the everyone was oh, turning yeah. on him. Like yeah. the first thing Rose did was text him. 20 seconds after she read the article and was like, this is all bull. Like, yeah, it's going to come back around and you're going to be fine. And yeah. now he's running DC. So he, yeah. you know, like, isn't it amazing? Because People love to jump on things, but yeah, the 10 year old tweet things and stuff like that. It's like, okay, you got people grace. Like 10 years ago, things were so different. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's reasons to be canceled. And yeah. then there's like silly things like that, which yeah. is there's, and it's just like, people are human. Like people make mistakes. There's so many mistakes I made growing up that, you know, I, and it's weird because when you're growing up with technology, the, I feel so bad for kids and like youth growing up now, because if they post everything, they just, all the mistakes are so public that, Mm -hmm. you know, you're supposed to learn from your mistakes. That's how you grow as a person. But if, if you're just being ridiculed, then it's like, how do you grow? Yeah. Or when you do change and people don't want to see it, they're like, well, you're still this person from 10 years ago yeah. or even three years ago. And it like discourages people from changing. Yeah. But, and yeah, like you said, social media, oh my God, if I would have had it like 16, you know, it would have been like way worse. So these people making mistakes, these young kids, it's like, it's out there forever and people hold it against them. It's silly. And I love how brave you are. I <laughs> like, I think it's so brave of you to just like say how you feel and speak your mind. And I've, that's something thing that I really admire and I think I want to do more of in my life and I because 
all of my thoughts, I, I don't think that I'm a mean person. I, mm. and I And I don't think that things I say are like unreasonable uh, the way I think about things. So I don't know why I haven't been more vocal publicly versus just privately. Yeah. You know, when I hang out with my friends, like when we hung out, e- even at my house, you know, when we would, you know, talk about what happened like with Colleen and stuff, mm-hmm. like I just don't talk about things publicly. I, I just talk to people privately you know, because I value people as human beings, and I and I don't ever want to like upset people and yeah. hurt people. So I think there's a balance. I think I've definitely overshared and quickly overexposed, and I'm very like irrational sometimes. Sometimes my feelings and emotions like I, they're heightened, and I do it at the high end. So you know, sometimes I need to take like a breather and like think about the situation. I think there's like times and places and all that stuff to say it. We can balance each other. Yeah, you are. You do it You You can take it down a step <laughs> and I need to take it up a step. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's called I balance. You're, you're the perfect balance right now. You're you're what I aspire to be for sure because that's the balance. Because you I'm say trying. it. You say it again with like such class. You're not saying it angry. You're not saying it like accusatory. Like you just say your experience and um, – I mean that that's all there is too. I think when you can just say facts and your experience and it's not emotion like two emotions getting into it, I think that's when people listen and I think that's that's what inspires me. I was like, yeah. you know what, I need to do that because pick and choose what where you want to like say things and stuff. But things that's that bother you, perfect. you should say. Yeah. That is great advice. My dad used to say that. He used to say, choose your battles, mm-hmm. don't sweat the small stuff. Right. Um, like small bad things that happen to you, they happen to all of us. He said, try not to let those get to you. But the real if there's a big thing that happens and it really affects you, that's when you should speak up. Say something. Mm-hmm. And that's when you say, I'm not taking this anymore and that's what I am going to start doing in my life moving forward I think that that is who I want to become and because I just don't want to be a doormat I'm so sick of being a punching bag and I'm really tired of like my kindness just being taken advantage Mm -hmm. of and just people treating me poorly because they can yeah um I I think that needs to stop I don't think that's good for my mental health and I think you're doing the right steps for it because yeah, then people take advantage of more than more than just the edit. It's like you know in real life too. It's like they they lie to you or they this. They're like, well, you know, Rose not gonna know or no, you know, all stuff like that. And it's like it's it's good when you can like take a stand. Yeah, and it's hard. It's hard because we're we're similar in that way. We're just different in like our approaches. But I'm very much the same. I'm very much like I I don't want to like stir feathers, especially now, you know, you're very, I'm very much like, I don't want to do it. But then there is a time where you're just like, okay, but like, I'm, I'm going to stand up for myself if there's lies, if there's whatever, you know. Yeah. And I always feel like when I grew up watching television and like late night talk shows, it was always guys. Like there was Mm -hmm. always guys expressing their opinion, working with writers and expressing how they feel about different topics and subjects. And I just really didn't see a lot of women expressing their thoughts and feelings. And I think that's what is really lacking. And I was telling you about that podcast. I know this is the old lady podcast (laughs) that I was listening to. What's it called? Do you know? It's called Wiser Than Me. I love it. And it's uh, Julie. Uh, by uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus. Louis Dreyfus, yes. love her, and she's interviewing women who are older than her and wiser than her in entertainment, and just the stories that they tell, like Jane Fonda and um, Rhea Perlman. Oh, I love um, her interview is wonderful. I learned so much, and I just I don't think we hear enough from women in entertainment about mm-hmm. their experiences because well, even YouTube, it's still like the top YouTubers is like over 90% male. Is it really? Yeah, it's still a male dominated. Uh, there's females who are successful, but it's, you know, it's still, yeah, a, as is tradition, still male dominated. Isn't, that's crazy to me. That is who, I wonder who is like the top females, like, right. Who ranks up there. I can't even think of anyone right now, which is like really sad. We were doing a girl love podcast, like not a podcast, a girl love panel at VidCon many years ago. Oh, and who was I it? remember at the time out of the top 100 YouTube channels, I think only five of them were female. <gasps> no. Five females no. out of top 100. Um, so I was wow. encouraging women to like support each other. And like, even if you guys make totally different things, types of content you know women supporting women are just like you know I don't know support is just because it's it's tough entertainment yeah. is a tough space and I'm really proud I've been watching like a lot of uh, women developing their own production companies like mm-hmm. uh, Mindy Keeling and um, Reese Witherspoon her Hello Sunshine 
uh, we've been taking a lot of meetings and trying to just be really supportive of women c producing and women creating content because we, we just weren't allowed to for so many years. It's important too. And I feel like women would feel like in competition or like back in the day, like in the 2010s, like the Scream Queens and stuff like that, they thought like, you know, there's not enough room for everyone. So I feel like women in general were like more competitive and didn't want to like help others out or something like that. Because what's bizarre is like, YouTube audience is mostly female, like in general, like the people who consume things and watch things, it's like very female based. So it is kind of bizarre, but I think for so long, people didn't want other females to get ahead. And I think we're seeing like kind of like the end of that people, like you said, now there's like more women helping women. And I think it's important. And I think it's important to be loud about it because like the Mr. B situation, it still happens intentionally or unintentionally, but this one maybe intentionally where it's male dominant. And that's why they cut women out or they don't want women involved. And yeah, that's why it's important too. like podcasting. There's so many men podcasters and, you know, that's, so I think it's just like very important for like women to have a voice, but you get just seen as like drama and, you know, you say something and you're considered drama or crazy or something like that. Right. So women are scared of it. And it's hard mm. to say like when there's a top creator and they make you feel like you're unwanted. Um, it's hard to just say that because they, they are so big and it, comparing it, it can feel like you're very small mm -hmm. and I'm, I've always been very small, so I should be <laughs> used to this feeling, right. but, um, it just, oh God. Yeah. I struggle with it too. I struggle with it too. I always feel like my popularity on YouTube's always been when I'm with like a guy like Shane or David or, you know, any of those things. Like I just, I feel that and it's like hot. It's like when I'm just by myself, like no one cares as much. And I do think, like I said, I think it's changing, especially now this era of just Trish and all. So like, I do think it's changing yes. where people, yeah, they just want, and I love, I love going on female podcasts. Like this whole year I've only done female podcasts, like Julia Fox, Megan Trainer, like, and I just yes. love it. I'm just like, this feels better. The vibes feel better. Because anytime I've been paired with a guy, like, yeah, you're, I'm used as, like, a punching bag. And then you just start thinking, like, that's your character or that's who you are or that's all you're good for. And I'm 35 and I still struggle with it. I'm like, well, maybe I was just supposed to be, like, this dumb character. You know what I mean? And you kind of revert back to it. And I always just thought I needed to be, like, next to someone to, like, feel validated. But, like, girls can do it on their own. And I don't know, just my friendship with you two and your sister and stuff. It's been so... I love it. It's been amazing. I've been like, wow, wow. Like I really, I, I held back for so long talking to people or reaching out to people because I just thought, well, they probably wouldn't like me or they're really? probably, you know, they're probably, I don't know. You just think, you know, these misconceptions about people. It's like. I always assume everyone is busy because I just know how much work it is to run a YouTube oh, yeah. channel. So I'm really bad where I assume everybody's so busy and they yeah. never want to hear from me. I'm so the same. I'm the same. I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to bug anyone ever. And I remember the first female to ever reach, the first person to ever reach out to me to collab was uh Ingrid Nilsson oh my god do you talk to her still oh my god no, I still love she her moved in New York is when we kind of lost so. I think touch she runs, like, is it candles or something she does she's, like she's making something now yeah. I gotta go wow. I gotta go creep yeah, on her a little bit Miss Glamorazzi she was yeah she was so she was great to me oh, she was wow. like let's collab and hang out we did videos together and she invited me to her launch party and mm -hmm. then at this party I met Cassie and who wow. does the blog a lot he's the fitness stuff oh my and, god and her and I just became instant friends and I just feel like Ingrid just like kind of just like brought me into the fold because I was just in my kitchen baking all the time. I didn't really know too many people and she really made an effort to make me feel included. And I just remember how good that felt Yeah, for like one person to be inclusive. Oh, it makes a difference. And it built my confidence and it made me like want to do the same for other people. And I was like, hey, this is, no, this is really cool. Yeah. Like this is... This is the way to do it. And I, I don't know. I, I still remember that. And I try to remember that even moving forward with the rest of idea, like how big of a deal that was to me and how much it meant to me mm -hmm. um, that she that she did that, Mike. That was so sweet. Because she was. I mean, she was. She was an it girl, too. She was like one of the OGs. I was talking yes. about Juicy Star, Glam Miss Glamorazzi. They were very, they were like 2008, 2007 YouTube, which. Oh my gosh, Michelle crazy. Fawn. Do you still, oh, do you, have you talked to her? Do you know oh her? Oh my God, I love her. Wait, really? She She's was the, the biggest. I mean, that girl she, was unstoppable. My mind was blown. One day she called me and said, Do you want to do lunch? Let's, let's oh go to lunch. Oh my gosh. We went to lunch, Mike, and she just sat me down and gave me the best business advice you could ever give somebody. What's she saying? She goes, you're promoting all these other products. You need to make your own. I was very like, true. Okay. I mean, I was taking notes. <laughs> and that worked out for her very well. Yeah. yeah. She, she, is she like a billionaire now? Because she had so. Ipsy. Well, she started she Ipsy, right? It. Yeah. Yeah. She's like one of the co-founders of Ipsy. And I know that they, um, 
years ago, they had a wait list. Like you couldn't even get on the subscription service. Like, right. The end she's cosmetics. so smart. She's so smart. Uh, she's a genius, Mike. I think she owns a record label or something. I, mean, I, don't music. I think she's like, she probably she bought it by accident and was she like, probably- oh, I guess I'll keep this. She just got lucky. <laughs> It's like when you accidentally add something to your cart by accident. Like, well, I'll just keep it. She's just like a co-founder of all these businesses. <laughs> Seriously. Like, oh. I always wonder what happens to like OG YouTubers that don't make things. I'm like, maybe they just made so much money. They like were smart with it. And they're like, I don't need to do this Some anymore. Did, for yeah. Sure. yeah. Or you get into investing. You can like invest in different businesses, different, you know, percentages, like invest 5% into this business, this business. Right. And That's then, really smart when people and, do that. Yeah. Then you got your stock options and you're just doing it. Oh, I was never smart with like investments that way. I always try to like yeah. invest in myself. Sometimes it paid off, sometimes it didn't. But I should have done more. Like branding is hard. Like making your own products. I saw you had Tarn. your own. Yeah. Your cute little ones. You had like little like cake, like poop like candies or something like that. They yes. were so cute. Like little molds you made. They were like the number one or number two most sold mold on Amazon. What they were so them? popular. Well, the company that I made them with, oh, yeah. Wilton, they sold their company, like went out of business. They got bought they by a German company. Got bought by a German company. I don't know one person there. I don't speak German. I don't know. Oh my gosh. I mean, so when our contract ended, I have no way of commute. There's Nobody who I knew is there. It's but all now. Now we do a home organization line though. Has been yeah, really we have a home organization line out at. Um, it's on Amazon. I think a little products left at um, container store, but wow. we moved everything to Amazon because it's just so much easier for people to yes. buy and like internationally mm-hmm. too. Because we moved into the the UK uh, as well, so we're doing like a little home organizational line. And wow. uh, but it's just a bummer when you partner with some companies you can't control if they're gonna sell or whatever. You know, that's not in my control. I found that's out so when everybody else did. Like, they didn't even... What? I know I'm not a big deal, but I'm one of their partners. You'd yeah. think they would just send me an email. Like, hey, by the way, we sold the company. No, wow. they didn't even email me. I found out, like, in a Google alert, like, that, like, what? they were like, hey, sells. And I was like, uh... What? Dude, but did you... Uh, <laughs> did you own the model? Like, did you own the, the model and stuff? Yeah, I own the designs. Yeah, but designs. They, they were like... <laughs> So you never hear from them. They're no, just, just gone, just vanished. So the little like poop candy things you can't. Ma- I guess you could make it. You just have to find another manufacturer yeah, or something. Yeah, I'll just have to like find a whole. Because oh, those were so cute. The packaging was cute. Oh, the little them. molds were cute. It broke my heart. I, they were performing really well too. So it, oh. it sucks when you make something and it's performing well, and then like something happens that's out of your control. You know? Have you ever sold in Target? Because I know you partner with Target. Have you ever sold in Target? I'm not sure. We were at Walmart uh, oh, for many that's years. That's huge. That's huge. Um, oh, your cookbooks have always we been We did their um, oh, yeah. Saturday morning at Walmart. We went there and Walmart's met their CEO. Big. They're maybe huge. bigger than Target they now. Are. Yeah. They are. they huge distribution. Wow. Um, and even that's... after our contract was done, Walmart kept my products because uh, we had a great working relationship oh, wow. and um, it just worked out really well. I mean, I don't know any other YouTuber who's had these accomplishments that you have. Like, like being in stores, being on like networks. No, I mean truly, and I love all YouTubers. I support when they go mainstream, but to like get recurring shows, I mean that's very hard. Like they give a lot of YouTubers chances, and then they usually don't translate for whatever reason. But like it's yeah. amazing how you've been in all these stores. It's it's something that's so difficult. Like I we've tried, I've tried all these different things, and it's very difficult. And even the biggest YouTubers don't know how to do it or can't do it or. It's amazing, and that's it's, something... It's a lot. There's a lot of business. There's a lot of relationships. There's a lot of different moving parts going on, and I've learned a lot about distribution and um, basically be- making products as well and the different setups and things. So I've become a, like a smarter businesswoman. Not that I wanted to. I wanted to be more creative, <laughs> yeah, but I had, had to, to learn. learn to make it happen, and I got really lucky uh, and met really good people. And that's why I remind everybody, there's great people. People in business yeah. and entertainment. They're out there. There's so many wonderful people. Um, so don't let a bad experience or like a bad, you know, deal like ruin it for you because it that's not how everyone's like. Yeah. That's the best lesson you could tell someone is just to keep going yeah. through it because so many people want to like see you fail or a lot of people just give up and it sucks because there's so many good creative talented people that give up and you're just like wait what happened like you know and that just happens and I think that's like a great success story is all the like little failures or the little setbacks and stuff like that because then people are like oh remember this like look at me now look at us we're so resilient (laughs) I'm 
I'm literally, I'm a geriatric millennial, you guys. No, you're I'm, not. You're I'm like literally, millennial. I, I literally, I'm a geriatric millennial now, and I'm um, and still making YouTube content, still doing TV shows, and I feel really happy about it. And I feel like I'm as I'm getting older, I'm getting more confident of speaking my mind. Yeah, and it's, I, it's wonderful. God, it's so good. Stage two is the good stage. Right? But it's like, <laughs> why? Mm-hmm. Why can I do this 20 years ago? I, I wish I could put my mindset in my body 20 years ago. Yeah. I always say that too. I'm like, I wish I could be this person now in my twenties. I would have gotten like a lot, I could have gotten a lot further, just like be more emotionally regulated and more, you know, but, right. but that's life. You have to learn. You have to learn these things. Yep. That's why we are the way we are now. Cause you're like, okay, I had to learn that lesson. I had to do that. And yeah, you yeah. can't, had to like, I don't know. Stage two is a good stage. I always tell people that I'm like, don't be scared of getting older. Like thirties is like my favorite every year. I feel like it's better. I think it's amazing. You stop caring so much what other people think you, you let little things go. And then the big things you talk about, you know, and I think that's, it's so amazing. And that's why I love. It's a blessing. Oh, growing old. It really is. And that's another thing I don't think like as women, people talk about as much as everyone's like, oh no, getting old or getting old. They say it so negatively, but it's so great. So great. I've, I don't think I've been happier. I don't think I've felt more solid. Yes. I don't think I've felt more confident. I don't think that I've just, I don't know, like holistically, I just feel like even even with Mike, we've been together for so many years. We've been together over 10, 11, 12, okay, I don't even, yeah, we stopped counting. so it's many like years. <laughs> over 10 like, years. I just don't, I wow. would never go back ever. I am. Ever. It's just strong now and it's just awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to worry either. I, I feel the same way. I was always so worried about relationships and love and what are they doing and DMs and it's just like you just stop worrying about everything. Weight even too. It's just like, you know, weight or the way you look or body image issues. You were saying right before yeah. this that you're going this more natural route. Like you're like, you know what? I just want my personality to shine. And I thought that was such a powerful thing because we both love to be glam and like we'll love still be glam. glam. Oh, but there's I love glam. ways there's a fun time to do it. And I also just love like your you just your hair is natural and Thank talking you. about I just saw recently too, like that you it was like a year ago that you had your breast implants removed mm-hmm. and you did the fat graft. And like, I've been talking about that for so long. I want mine out. I'm just like over yeah. the look. I'm over the pain. I'm over also the toxicity. I'm sure I have like breast implant and I'm always like so sick from them. So I think all the stuff you share and because you share it, it like inspires so many people, you know, especially the implants, especially the surgery. It's like what you said in your video about it was like, it's a, it's a lifelong commitment. It's yeah. every 15 years. Yep. Yeah. And that's something people don't know about. And when you say stuff like this, it's just, like, so important for girls to hear because it's stuff they don't tell you, you know? And they don't even explain, like, your whole body builds scar tissue around the entire implant. Yeah. Because your body knows it's not supposed to be there. Yeah, it, like, rejects. And Mm -hmm. and so, like, people don't understand there's more to it than just like, oh, now you have pretty boobs. Like, right, There's yeah. so much more. The trauma, yeah, it's, it's actually traumatic. It can make you sick. I've talked to so many people about yeah. it. And like you said, it does. It almost like rejects. There's leakage. There's all this stuff like that that's actually really, really dangerous and really scary. And I would like more people should talk about it. And I think that's another good thing that you talk about just in general. I love how you're Thank open you. about it all. Because I was I watched that video and I don't remember when that all happened. And I was just like, wow, she's like being so open. I didn't know you had surgery. I didn't know you had it removed, you know? So, you know, you look at someone like you and I'm just like, oh, I just love now too. You're just like, I just want my personality to shine. And I'm like, that's, that's so important. I think that like when I'm aging and like, I I think I'm going to try to do it as gracefully as possible. I might have a little something done to my face someday (laughs) and I will just film it and show everybody. Yeah. Um, But in general, I'm trying to do it as gracefully as I can and find out what makes me feel good and me feel the most confident versus what I think other people want. Mm -hmm. Um, That mindset is gone. And I think that has been the most healthy for me in like this phase of my life is just letting go of what I think other people want and just doing what I want for me. And that's the first time I've ever done this. I've never uh, put myself first. I've never tried to take care of myself in that way. And, um, it's weird. It's weird. It, it's definitely weird. Like I eat salad now. <laughs> because you like it? No. no. <laughs> I was like, I haven't gotten to that phase yet. <laughs> Where's that phase I'm at? getting used to it, but it's like, I eat salad for lunch. I used to, I used to never, I would never eat a I salad. I can't do salad. Well, how did you get into that mindset? I oh, need to get right. there. <laughs> so I started, I just had to eat more fiber. Okay. So also when you get older, the, the thing that's funny, but it's the only thing that sucks is the medical problems. Like yeah. medically you do get issues mm. as you get older, as you age. Yes. And so I have to eat more fiber so I can poop healthy. Oh. <laughs> that, that, it, 
<laughs> maybe that's my problem. Because I was, like, on Metamucil or something because I, like, couldn't go. And I was just like, maybe. Fi- girl, fiber. Fiber. And oh. salad's fiber? Oh, yeah. To yeah. me, salad feels just like water or something. I don't know. Yeah, just What's all the, the fiber in all, it? All the, the leaves. The crunchy leaves. Like spinach or, like. Spinach. Well, you know, arugula, like when we were kids, they were like, oh, there's nothing lettuce. in salad. You use more calories chewing it. There's no nutritional value. Yeah. No, there's a ton of nutrients. Is there? I always hear that. And even like the most basic salads. And there's protein in even the spinach. Oh my gosh. Were you always a healthy person, Mike? No, no, I'm still not. Oh, you're not? (laughs) Okay. I I just like to know stuff. I don't follow it. You know stuff about salads. Mike loves Taco Bell. Oh, man. Uh, Taco Bell's good. He would eat a bean burrito from Taco Bell every day if I let him. three times this week. No, you're tall. That's the, you're very lucky. I'm tall and I'm male, so it's like a cheat Yeah, I know. It's just not fair no. i eat taco bell once and i gain like 20 pounds i say like, don't eat for three days i'll do like a water fast i swear i stay the exact same way it's so hard and i, I tested my thyroid it's like fine i'm like oh my god i just can't lose weight Wait, you did a water fast i've done water fast i like documented no. it on youtube yeah and they used to work i used to lose like really? 20 pounds in three days like but now i do it and it doesn't work it's crazy have you ever done like a lot of little like fiber and protein that's what i'm doing no. and it's working so well it's slow and steady like uh, slowly and steadily i lost the weight that I put on during COVID because I did not handle COVID you mentally very well. Lo thought, really? Ro thought the world I was going to break I thought the world it was, scary. was going to end. I saw the news and yeah. all over the world, all the countries, you know, the virus is everywhere. And I just, I looked at Mike and I was like, we're going to die. Really? We're you really gonna, got it? I said, we're all going to die. And I was end just in our hot tub, smoking <laughs> weed, drinking, <laughs> I, uh, eating pizzas. That's us. That I was, was us. I literally <laughs> like screw it we're all gonna die and then when I they developed that. the vaccine like a year later yeah i was like okay okay i need to slow down because it looks like i'm gonna live like i just didn't cope very well i i kind of like emotionally ate like i mm. i coped with food and alcohol and and gummies like those thc gummies oh yeah i was just lit for an entire year <laughs> were you making content still or no yeah oh, okay so you're <laughs> You're productive, so you were. You're like it's yeah. gonna end, but I'm still gonna I, make some videos. I, I was so messed up though, Mike. We were making like a, you know, everyone was making bread. Oh yeah, the and, banana and, bread and so cob bread. And- yeah, so I was like, here's my mom's banana bread recipe, <laughs> and then I'm looking at Mike like we're all gonna die. What does it matter? And he's like, just make the bread. Oh my. <laughs> I mean, the bread was good. Just put it in the oven. Come on, let's go. <laughs> put it in the oven, woman. Uh, do you eat like, it all, too, when you make it? Do you guys yeah, eat it all? Mm. those are my cheat days, because I have a sweet, too, so I love oh, the sweets. So man. on the cheat days, we do, like, cupcakes or cakes or brownies oh, or wow. cookies. And... Do you always make it from scratch, or do you ever do box? Mm, I do scratch now. Oh, Most of all the recipes are scratch. Wow. When I first box, started, though. it was box cakes, but now it's from scratch. Wow, that's amazing. That's I one thing them. I cannot do, bake. You'll know. I just, I'm not good at measuring things, so I always just, like, eye it. <laughs> It takes forever it takes to measure. Forever. It really does. Oh my god, baking is not my forte, which I love. I do love I gotta, sweets, but I gotta get you like a pre-made, like a jar where everything's already measured. You just dump I it. I can't in even do it and stir. Those yellow cakes, I never. They always are like flat. I don't know what I do wrong. Okay, I'll just bring you cookies okay. or something. I'll bring, I'll bring you some. <laughs> we good do like then. crumble. I'm like, well, that's good. I do oh, like sweets. Love crumble. Do you love them? Oh my god, they're pretty gosh. good. Yeah. yeah, I love food. It's they good. have good recipes. Mm. Have you ever tried intermittent fasting? That no. works really good for me. Is that Mike like, is, does that? Okay, so what is that eating one meal a day? That's how I do it, but a lot of people, you know, it's you, just a twelve-hour break. Like an, I think an eight-hour, well, or eight-hour. Yeah, if 12. you can do, if you can do a sixteen-hour break and then eat for sixteen. Well, that's not bad. If you're sleeping eight hours, yeah, exactly. You would. So it'd be like eight hours after you wake up. So eight hours after like seven a.m. That's like you're eating at like one. Yeah, and the idea is that since you're limiting yourself to eating at those times only, overall you're eating less. So it's not some magical thing like, okay, cram as much as you can in this eight hours. Okay. But it really is like eat till you're full and then try and – I train myself to where I don't eat breakfast. And so my first oh, meal is like I at lunch. I can't do that. Yeah, I get and so And then I'll hungry. have dinner and then that gets hungry. me through the whole day. But everybody's different because like Rose's so small, she can't physically eat enough to like feel full Interesting, the whole day. yeah. But for me, like if I eat the right amount of protein and stuff, I'm full – like, I've trained myself to be full. It's like what you eat during that fast, too. Because I think for me, I would just want to, like, fill everything. And like I'd eat pasta. Like, I'd just eat a ton of pasta. And I feel like then that would not be good either. I'm yeah. more of a <laughs> – I need my schedule. Like, I have the same protein smoothie every morning. I have the same salad for lunch. And then for night, it's, like, chicken and potatoes. 
Oh, and you have potatoes. Yeah, love okay. potatoes. So when you lost all your weight, you were still eating carbs, or yeah. were you more? So you never yeah. went like keto or anything. No, I don't like keto. I don't like any of the restricting stuff because it doesn't work for me. Not long term. It really, I give up on it quickly if it's too extreme. I have to be able to enjoy life. I have to be able to. Yeah, I love food. I, I I can't do that. It has so. to be about portions. Portions. That, portions. Like, I think that's a big. When people completely cut out stuff, that's not healthy. Like they're gonna find out later that that's not good for you to right. just not eat certain things forever. And so portions is like the most important. Yeah. I think that's where I struggle because we cook a lot and we cook big portions and I just, I it love to eat big portions, but you know, it's good to eat a variety of food and I love potatoes. I eat them every day. Wow. I, I, purple potatoes, red potatoes, mm, white potatoes. Gold potatoes. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I Ooh, love the yeah. potatoes Sweet too. Potatoes. We're potato people over here. But do you work out? Uh, not lately. Wow. <laughs> so you just kept it off with portion control. Yeah, basically I just wow. eat like good portions, lots of protein, and I cheat all the time. I mean, we do, we do a, like the other night I wanted gnocchi, so we just did a lot uh, of pasta. I think last week we had pizza three weeks. Three Ooh, yeah. Row, like. Yeah. So, gnocchi but, and pizza are my favorite. The old me would just eat an entire pizza. The, the new me is eating just a couple slices. That's and really so good. so it's the portion. People don't realize, it's the, like they hear the 2,000 calories a day is like the standard. Standard. That's what that's, I heard. That's high for most people. So Ro got her. You can get it tested. How many calories you burn? Oh, Ro yeah, your resting metabolic calories. rate because you're so t- you're so short. Yeah, she's yeah. so small, and her her structure is small too. Right. So I was way overeating. Yeah, I, and so I you wasn't... eat two thousand calories, like oh I'm great. And me, like I, I don't have a lot of muscle, but I only burn like fifteen hundred, and I'm six foot two. Wow. And so people they are told all this stuff like the food pyramid and two thousand calories and. Lettuce has no nutrition. Like, it's all wrong. And wow. so it's like you're trying to operate with all this information. It has a lot of incorrect. vitamins and minerals, and I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nobody yeah. told me that. And I thought iceberg lettuce was just water. Yeah. Did not know it had vitamins and minerals, and I didn't know fiber helped you poop. Fiber also helps lower your cholesterol. Oh, In wow. my family, um, people genetically have really uh, higher cholesterols. Mm. Um, so... That's something that I have to watch. And uh, basically, it's pairing your food with a fiber. So, like, if you're eating a little string cheese, like a piece of cheese, eat it with an apple or eat it with uh, a fiber. Apple's um, fiber? Mm, oh, I wouldn't yeah. know. Oh, oh my yeah, gosh. yeah. Oh, apples are great. Those help you poop. I oh, always yeah. think sugar. Like, you think <laughs> fruit, you think sugar. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's oh, crazy. Apples are great. Or, like, um, Mike, is it jicama? It has yeah. really fibrous. And the thing oh. about fruit is you want to eat fruit, you don't want to eat. Juice. You don't want juice. No juice, juice. is horrible for you. Fruit do the, juice. Do the yeah, fruit. It, all fruit juice is like so bad because it's just water and sugar at that point. Right. With the fruit, you get like the meat of it, which slows down the absorption of the sugar oh in your body. Gosh. Like the it fibers. has way more nutrients, fiber, like... Yeah, and again, it's like all this knowledge that you were taught as a kid is actually wrong. And yeah. Like they're trying to like change it. Well, they but had everyone terrible growing education up, about everyone, food even people our age, up. they just don't know. Yeah. They have the wrong information. In my public oh, yeah. school, they had that. Did you the have pyramid? the pyramid? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that, that thing's a scam. Yeah, totally. It was like the fats. Like, you need more fats than what they put on there. They're like, the fats are at the top. You only need a little bit of that. And you're like, nope, but you need no. more. You yeah. need the good fats. Because yeah. lipids burn lipids. That's yeah. fat burns fat. That, that's science. Also, they, they put. Mike, where did they, they put eggs in like the dairy section? Yeah, and they said like, I'm like that's a protein. No, it was literally that's, 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 right. this, what the are you graph was like to... made by corporations. It wasn't made oh. by like actual science. And was it so made by like, like a cereal company? Yeah, so it's like oh, you need tons, <laughs> you need tons of carbs and sugar yeah, and all that stuff. And it was like, the bottom, and, yeah. uh, and, <laughs> all the bread. And don't eat don't eat fat because that's what makes you fat. Not all the sugar you're eating. It's like yeah. no, the fat's bread. actually healthy for you. It burns the healthy fat. Like it if you. If you dig into how we got to where we are, it's pretty nasty, like, why we were taught these things. That makes sense, because, like, pasta and yeah. bread was at the bottom, and mm-hmm. you're just like, I just got to eat all this bread, you yeah. know what I mean? Which isn't, like, the worst for yeah. you, but it's definitely not your main category of, over, like, meat or something. Isn't that nuts? It's wild. Yeah, I mean, the way we grew up in, like, the 90s and stuff like that, like, there, all the diet culture was just bad. I thought Diet Coke was good for you, and then literally when I yes. got pregnant, they're like, just drink wine or beer. Like, that's more, boy, like, Red Bull or uh, Diet Coke is, like, so poisonous. And I love Diet Coke, but it was, like, the worst thing for I you. had to quit Diet Coke. I <sighs> love it, too. It's so good. But it's, like, literally, like, the worst thing for any diet. Any diet soda is horrible for you. They had an article that came out uh, recently that was saying that I, I, I think it's the the faux sugar in, in the diet coke yeah. is like causing leaky gut and Eesh. like gut issues. Ew. And I'm like, don't eat any of those. 
Yeah. Why does it taste so good? I know. Why I love Diet Coke. Do this to me. I like. We were just talking about this. Most like I don't understand why people drink Diet Coke over Coke. And I'm like, that's all my mom bought, and I loved it. I just loved the taste of me Diet Coke. Me too. I, they have to put something so addictive yeah, in there because it's so good. I feel like a lab rat that they've trained to love Diet Coke. <laughs> like, they, they, like they've addicted me enough where I'm like, I need it. It's every well, time in like I Mexico, see it. They have to call it Coca Cola Light. Because even in America, calling it diet, it's to trick people to be like, oh, in it's Mexico, oh, you're on a diet. there's Why a label that says don't yes. drink if you're pregnant, too. Yeah, and then literally on their labels, it has warnings. And like, yeah. it's it's very different. And it opens your eyes when you go to other countries. Yeah, they say it's like literally like kill your baby if you have a little pregnant. Like, it was the scariest thing. I was like, I'm not doing it. It's so, like, I can have like a diet Coke at McDonald's. Like, don't do it. <laughs> it's like, oh my I gosh. I salivate when I see them. I know. The diet Coke, especially at McDonald's. They have Nothing their fountain drinks else. are so good. I know. All my, you can put all my favorite foods in front of me, all my favorite stuff. And if you put a Diet Coke, I would start drooling over that Diet Coke. Do you not Coke. do it anymore? No, I had to stop yeah. because my tummy started to get like really sensitive mm. and I had to start taking better care of myself and like my gut health. Yeah. And that's why I'm eating all this fiber. It's amazing. I'm <laughs> eating all this protein. I'm eating these salads. You look good. And your mom too, you have good genes. She's like 70. When I and I was like, oh my God, she looks amazing. She's she so like spry. Loves, like she's Italian and she does like the Mediterranean diet. She eats a lot of fresh, you know, like fish and, and veggies and fruits. And she looks great. She, she really loves to eat healthy and she kind of makes me love eating healthy. I do love my sweets, but but I do like healthy food too. Yeah. Like I love apples. I like uh, carrots. I like all that stuff. So you're just, just like not a carrot? I'm trying to love salads. Okay. I'm really <laughs> but not there yet. trying to love <laughs> salads, but it's hard yeah. because my heart wants French fries. Uh, but can you do both? Like my have a side cholesterol of fries? wants the salad. God, so fries I'm so like. I haven't conquered that yet. I haven't conquered that. Like, eating is just my favorite. And one day, one day, maybe, I'll, I don't know what it is. One day, maybe I'll transition, but. <laughs> it is, it's difficult. And I try to be really good during, like, the off season yeah. of the Food Network shows. Because when you're filming the Food oh. Network shows, I'm eating, like, eight. 12 cookies a day from all the contestants and that's really an uh, indulgence even for me. I mean, that's, that's a, a lot. lot of cookies that's, yes. <laughs> and it's delicious and I don't fake it. I eat all of them. Um, so, and I enjoy it, but you uh, know, I get a little curvy after that show. Yeah. I, I usually put on at least 10 pounds. Wow, because it's so sugar uh, yeah. and yeah. And I pick wardrobe that progressively gets a little bigger <laughs> as the show goes Great on. Stretch dresses so by I, the end of it. The episodes, the episodes are coming out now and I literally <laughs> You can see me bigger every time no, I go. I died laughing because we were watching. We don't see the cut of every episode until they air. So we were watching one, and her co-host oh, Duff, her co-host Duff <laughs> is like talking about the cookie, or whatever. And you see Ro in the background with this huge cookie, just I'm holding just it with like... both hands, just like taking the biggest bite, like Ro, she forgetting she's on a show, is just like eating like two thousand calories worth of a cookie. And it's like Ro, you can only you can take one bite. Oh like, my god. Dad, it's like Ro just doesn't even care that it's a show. She's like, oh, I love that. Oh, it's so funny. That's why funny. it's authentic. That's so, so real. It's like orgasmic moment. I'm just like, I feel that way when I eat. I'm like eating this cookie, forgetting that they're filming me, and, and it was just like, like double like hand. It was so big. It was like a foot by face. a foot, and she's like, ah. Oh my god. I love, I love when people love food, though, especially on those shows. Like that's when it's like real and authentic. Oh. You know, I think that's why people love like Guy Fieri and Diner yes. Drive-ins. You know, because he yeah. eats it. You can tell he loves it. I love it. his noises. He's like, mm, yeah. oh, 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 this is a great, oh, a great Hogan. Oh, 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 oh. Every I episode, it. I love every second of it. It's so good. He's the dream job. I'm like, I want his job. When's mm-hmm. he retiring? Because that is everything. Food-based things are, but I would just gain so much weight. I don't know Trish, how he does just, it. We'll take over and we'll, yeah, and we'll put in our it. contracts. They have to get us trainers. <laughs> yes. And oh they got to get us. That's, that's what it is. Salads. <laughs> Salads. If I knew I was gonna do diner and diamonds, I would eat salads. I would eat it because in preparation yeah, for a, a good a meal, balance. it's yeah. a balance. I can do that. Yeah, we eat I the fiber and then we eat something yummy. Yes, I think that then I could definitely do it. And now I'm still kind of that way. If I know we're gonna have like a big lasagna for dinner, I'm like, okay, let me just have like you know a half a grilled cheese for lunch or something. You know, it's Love not it. nutritious, but I try. It's just so balance. hard. It's all balance. Balance yeah. and portions. That's what's worked for me because I can't calorie count. I can't diet. I can't do any of that. I, I just it doesn't yeah, work Rose for me. Yeah, Rose still eats all of her favorite things. It's just portions. Portions, yeah. 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 I think that's the healthiest way because if you cut out all your favorite stuff, it's not going to lie. That's not... 
That's, you have to be crazy yeah. for that to work. Like, Not sustainable. It's, it's really just realizing, like... No, Mike, and I'm Italian. And what Italian family... <laughs> Are you going to be like, oh, no, whole Italian family. I'm not going to eat this delicious pasta mm. for Christmas. They, uh, they would murder me. Do you make me. pasta for Christmas? Yeah, oh. we do handmade pasta from scratch every Christmas. Oh. Could you imagine the insult to my poor mother? Not eating it. My little mama Mia. Is she, I'm like, <laughs> oh, no, I'm off carbs. Uh. She'd be like, oh. Uh. <laughs> That's the dream. I would love pasta for Christmas. I could eat pasta. I have eaten pasta every day for the past like ten years of my life. It's just my favorite anywhere so we go. And I'm not even Italian. I always thought I should marry an Italian. I'm like, I need to get in that family where they make all of Italian food. Jewish and- food's bomb though. Yeah, actually, um, we've gotten really into it. Yeah, very much like hummus bar, uh, like that kind of stuff. It's very, and it actually, but that's also very fattening. You think it's like healthy, but like pita bread, I just eat all the laffa bread. Like I eat all that stuff. Mm, Schnitzel, what? which is like, what's that? What's the holiday where there's a oh. lot of food involved? I mean, a lot of them have food. But yeah, what, what, there's a a big holiday. Well, Hanukkah's like bread. It's like it's a uh, jelly donuts. Mm-hmm. Passover. Oh, Passover is huge. They do matzo ball. Oh. And, uh, well, I guess you don't do bread then. You do like matzo crackers. When do you do the challah bread? Challah Shabbat, I guess. So every Friday they do a big Shabbat dinner. So you have like the big challah bread. It's like the braided bread. And the, they have a lot of breads that are good. Like their breads are amazing. The lava bread's good. Oh, did you do wine too? Oh, yeah. That's Passover. That one, I never drink except I drink on Passover and <laughs> like get drunk. We did one because you drink after each prayer. There's like 18 prayers. It goes on forever. And Can you make yeah. up prayers so you could have some more drinks? <laughs> Just kidding. Well, me. You know what's the problem is you 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 can't eat until the prayers are over, so you're just drinking, but you're wanting to eat, and it's just it's it's a lot. Like then you're all drunk. We we did it this year, and it was crazy. It was our first like big Passover. So Jewish food is great too. I mean, I just love food in general. There's not one food I don't like, except me maybe too. salad. I yeah. know, girl. I'm trying to love it. I'm trying. Ow. I'm trying these really and not just boring salads. I'm trying ones that incorporate a little quinoa, a little chickpeas. Like they have they have a lot of elements to them yeah. so it's not just like lettuce leaves I know mine's boring I get like the chicken Caesar salad and I'll just eat like I don't like dressing which is good I don't like sauces or dressing in general so I just eat like a dry salad people are like why are you eating dry I'm like we do one there's one called health nut around here have you been there I love health yeah, nut yeah theirs are pretty good <gasps> the Kardashians got me on there Yummy. and I was like okay I'll try it it's pretty good yeah that's like if Molly I'm trying likes to be healthy the, uh, she likes the noodle rama Oh, I That's haven't tried it. That's my sister's favorite salad. What's, is it like a hard noodle in there? It's soft. Or soft so noodle. it's literally oh. it's like it, it's like salad mixed with noodles. Oh, well, so see, I, don't I don't need more noodles. I, it's I, not I, healthy. I, I, it's literally <laughs> eating pasta. Okay, I was like, I don't need more noodles. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> my sister, she's lactose intolerant, so we, we've we been going to a bunch of vegan restaurants just because she can't have dairy. Oh, my gosh, really? Yeah, and even if we tell chef, like, you know, oh, my sister's allergic, they might forget that they've, like, sautéed a chicken with mm. a little bit of butter, you know, something, and she gets really ill oh, uh, my very gosh. quickly. So we've been going to, like, vegan restaurants, and there's actually mm. some really great ones, like yeah. Crossroads oh, and I West Hollywood. Oh, I love Hollywood. Crossroads. Oh. There's one here in Calabasas, and we go there all the time. They have, like, a really good bolognese. They have meat pasta again. It's so good. It's yeah. No, I love I love Crossroads. You could bring someone there and not tell them it was vegan, yeah. and they wouldn't have no idea. I'm very not anti vegan in like that sense. I'm very just like oh, I hate vegan food, but I love that one. I eat it with my sister. I also watch reality with my sister. Like I don't watch a lot of reality <laughs> shows. I like scripted. Yeah, she loves reality. I love reality. So too. when I want to hang out with her, I gotta watch reality shows. What do you guys watch? She watches Bachelor, Bachelor oh, yeah. in Paradise. We watch Vanderpump. <laughs> oh, I don't get into that one. I don't I, get it. I didn't know anyone yeah. until she had me watch it last season. I learned who Tom was and Ariana. Ariana. I, I just learned, know from TikTok. I learned. Oh yeah, everywhere. Yeah, because. I, 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 because I'm all in. Raquel, I know, was yeah. there Raquel? <laughs> she basically gave me a reality show. Uh, the Real Housewives franchise. My sister loves watching Beverly Hills and Orange County and New York and Atlanta. We we uh, now I know the Housewives. Right. I did not know them before. I don't know them either. People say them. I'm like I don't know. I am you just. Like it? I'm just learning. Are you into it? I am trying to get into it. I think what I like is, like, I just like hanging out with the girls, like having a girls' trip or a girls' yeah. day or something. So I, I kind of like that. I, they fight with you. They're you know drama. I yeah. I don't know. I would you join it? Would you be on it? <laughs> what would they 
even do with me? Like you I'd would be, be good. So, I'd be. I, I feel like I wouldn't fight enough. I feel like yeah. they'd be like you have to fight. I don't know. I don't know the premise of the show. They fight a lot. I don't know. They fight with each other, but it's probably scripted. It's probably fake. But even so, even if it manufactured, wasn't, <laughs> I do think you know what? If I had a really good friend on the show and someone messed with her, I could see me. I'm much more likely to stand up for others than myself. Interesting. I wonder why so, that is. Very like protective, mm-hmm. and I was. I'm a big sister. My sister's a little sister, and I feel really protective of her. Like I, I if anybody messed with her or hurt her, I would be in there in two seconds. I wow. wouldn't even think about it. Yeah. Um. So I think it would be the same way with friends. So why I, can't I, you do it for you? Right. What is it? I wonder. You I just need a to psychologist. Be we need a therapist yeah. over here. <laughs> why, <Dr. Drew. laughs> why am I okay with standing up for others and people I love, but not myself? Because you could still be perceived as not liked by standing up for other people. You know what I mean? So it is right. interesting. I like kind of think those like psychology behind it. Because I don't even like, that? I don't stand up for other people. It's more just fear again. Like I'm just like, I don't know what to do in this situation. I'm very bad at that. I mean, I want to be, I'm just, I'm bad to get for myself. I'm bad to get for others. God, I don't know. Man, it's interesting. That is weird. Maybe it's just you're more, hmm, maybe self. Oh my gosh, I'm learning so much. Yeah. I'm, like when we're <laughs> hanging out, like what? Characteristic to have. It's a very good quality to have, you know what I mean? Wow. To- so that would be me. I would probably get crazy if somebody messed with somebody I really cared about. Yeah. That would be. You could go off on. Yeah, they could, pro- <laughs> yeah, they could probably treat me like crap for a very long time. Yeah. And I'd be actually not even noticed. But eventually <laughs> I'd be like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> be like, I'm um, so used to it now. I can see like, you on the show. You could be on Real Housewives because you throw extravagant parties. Oh my god! You know, yes. you're very that. Even like the kids' parties you throw for your nephews, it's like amazing. I, it's quite amazing. I'm like, oh my god, your we need parties to throw. are amazing. Well, right we back got at so you. many birthday parties. I'm like, wow, do we need to like throw something big. <laughs> Malibu yeah. can't even walk, and we're like to have bouncy houses. <laughs> that birthday but you did party it yourself was. Beautiful. Wow. Thank you, but we overpaid and oh. everything, and you guys did it yourself, and it looked so amazing. It's That's like, really sweet. We're trying to become more of a party house, like having my own um, stuff there, because yeah. renting in L.A. is so expensive, and they Crazy. upcharge you so much because a lot of people don't have the space to store like party equipment yeah. and things, so when you're renting, it's at this huge upcharge, so we're trying to build. We built like a storage set on the, on the side of the house, and we're trying to get like our own cocktail tables and stands so that I don't have to wow. rent them every that time. That is what's the most expensive. We get our budget, and we like analyze everything, and it'll be like $7,000 in like furniture rental. We're like, what? How is that? Yeah, it costs yeah. more to rent it once than it does to buy it. Yeah, that's... Like they, they just take advantage of people in LA because you don't have a yard. You can't the right. store it. Storage. So we've like in our yard, we've found little places that we like put a little shed, and we're gonna maybe even do a second one. Wow! And like buy all the up lights and all the like you can buy ninety percent of it, and it's ready to go. And it then really cuts down the cost. It allows that, us to have more parties too, right? Cause yeah, because yeah. it can be so. Because you just did Halloween parties. Did you guys? Did yeah. you guys hire people to do those, or did you? Yes. Yes. So then you. I ordered, I, I, or I hired the same party planner as my girlfriend, uh, Re- Rebecca, Rebecca Zamolo. Uh, oh, she yeah. would host a bunch of parties and I loved them. And she put me in touch with her, uh, like event planner. And, uh, we worked with her a couple times and they were really pretty. We did a holiday party, a Christmas party. We did a, a Halloween. Um, and even for the smaller stuff, she'll help us with like little balloons or like a photo stand. But I'm learning that a lot of that stuff you can buy and build. Mm-hmm. And we have the room to store it we're really lucky that way so i think in the future we'll do more of that just because we love to party my yeah. sister and i we love to have fun i love it uh we were party animals in college which is crazy to me i know oh my god! like gosh. i couldn't even believe it but then he showed me college photos of you and i was just like oh my gosh yeah you look like a partier for sure i was drinking all the time well that's fun though well, I, that's college I was drunk for four months. Imagine you had social media back then. Yeah. You know, like, were you Snapchatting or anything back in college? No, I wasn't. So right when I was going into college is when Facebook came out. Okay. I, like, grew up with the internet. Like, uh, Mm -hmm. we had dial-up in middle school and high school, and then internet got a little stronger. And then when I I went to college, it was right when uh, Facebook came out. And you had to have, do you remember this? You had to have a college email to have Facebook. Yeah, because I wasn't in college, and they're like, it's only for college students. And I was like, I remember my brother was on it. And I was like, what the heck? It's so weird. I wanted That's to be on it. That's when I had it. Oh. And uh, all of us at my college, all the photos that we posted were just drinking photos. It's just me <laughs> and a bunch of beer cans, basically, and like at parties. And uh, there's nothing that embarrassing. I really just drank, hung out with my girlfriends, had a great time. Uh, 
You got good grades. I did good That's grades. That's amazing. I didn't let him slip. For it's- drinking, being dyslexic, having ADHD, like wanting to act and not going for communication. Like, that's amazing that you I were was, able to do it. I had a lot of energy <laughs> when I was younger. And you still do. I do. I'm you like, have the most not, energy. It's like not what it used to be. What? I can't it's even like imagine. a half of it. And I'm glad I didn't meet Mike back then. I think I would have scared him. Oh, my God. You bring the party. You bring the party Love and the energy party. everywhere you go. Like, you really do. It's- Molly did a keg stand before me. <laughs> Growing up, <laughs> I like, can't picture that at all. Right? I know her as this like wifey Sweet mother. Little. Yeah, she isn't. She was a party How animal. Funny. She's fun. I never had that era of my life, but in general, I never go to. I think it's just more like me being socially awkward with people. So, be having having Malibu, I've been more social going to parties with her than I have my entire I life. I feel like you're so social. You're okay. very like I'm warm. Very... You're very open. I feel like you're so easy to talk to and like. It's, I think it's yeah. just you. You just bring it out and people, honestly, like oh, I feel, because okay. I'm not like that with everybody. <laughs> people will tell you, like, I'm just like awkward and not in a cute way either, not in a quirky, I'm awkward. It's just like, no, I'm like kind of socially, I, I don't know, it's kind of weird, but um, I think I've come out more and being married and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, let me try yeah. a little more. Even at our wedding, I was very socially awkward with people. I'm just like, okay, bye, thanks for coming. Like, I think what's really hard in entertainment as women is to make friends. I think so that hard. that is really hard because in entertainment in general, like in acting, you're just going from gig to gig. Yeah. Like you meet people, you're on a project for like a month and then they throw you over here and now you're over here and you have to follow the work. Mm-hmm. You're kind of like this traveling, you know, whimsical gypsy and you're just <laughs> kind of going around and it's like wherever you land is, you know, your people. And so it's hard to like form relationships and keep them when you're always on the go. Yeah. And then even when you do, it's like it, it you're always just not quite sure like if if they genuinely like you, I think that that um, also is hard about entertainment. And I, um, so w- what I've done over the years is I just try to make as many real friends as possible, mm-hmm. and then just see what sticks. Yeah. And I get really pleasantly surprised. You've had great ones stick with when you. I've had really good ones stick for years, and I'm like, this is incredible, yeah. a blessing, because it's hard. It's hard. And the ones that fall by the wayside are like lessons, and then the ones that stick around, you're like, yeah. thankful for. You can learn a lot from them. Yeah. And th- that's what I've learned. And same with on Scream Queens. I stayed in touch with a bunch of the girls, and then some of, some of the girls afterwards uh, d- did a couple of things to me that were um, a little cutthroat, and I... Um, and I just backed off. Yeah. Yeah. You just took it as like. Yeah. I mean, that's and that's friendships. They come and go and there's some that stick around and those. Yeah. And it's always sad, especially when it's like girl friendships and stuff like that. Those so are, sad. I know. I try so hard to keep girl friendships. And oh. I'm like, gosh. And then I'm like, maybe it's me. And I was like, you know, then you start thinking about it, all that stuff like that. I'm like, maybe I'm the problem. But I love girl friendships more than anything. So multifaceted yeah. um, with friendships. I remember in college, even I had a lot of girlfriends, um, and I lived in an all girl house and all girl dorm before. And I just growing up with my sister, we were so close that I just loved that. I wanted that sisterhood with me always, yeah. and I found it the hardest to build here in LA in entertainment. And I'm I love to like get people together, party, uh, like. I don't know what you'd call it, fellowship. I'm not. I, I don't. I just like it. I like uh, bringing people together, and that's it, your gift. It's hard here. Yeah, but you it's, are good at it. No, but you like you've introduced me to people that I have like now consider friends, like Candy. Like I met her obviously yeah. throughout the year. She's always been really nice, and so she lives sweet. close. And she's so sweet. She's always like, "Oh, you should go here and try these spots." She lives like within like five minutes from me, and so she's like, "You should try this place and this place." And she's so sweet. So I feel like through you, you know the good ones, and you know I think that's I got a handful of good ones. Yeah, They're just so like really good, solid people yeah. who have just like over time and through everything, like ups and downs have been there. And like, even in our relationships, I'm not perfect. Like as a friend, I uh, sometimes will get so busy. And with ADHD, I get like tunnel vision Mm -hmm. where I'll, I'll get in a zone and then I forget to text back my friend or, you know, I forgot a a birthday, you know, and I, I make mistakes like that. I mess up, but I just apologize right away, hash it out. Just, just, to shower them with as much love yeah. and let them know that it's not intentional. And they said they know that it's not deliberate. Yeah. I'm never intentionally trying to do something. So that's where I struggle is like with texting people back and I'm getting better at it. Mm-hmm. I'm really trying to concentrate it and like change, but it's hard I'm because hard. it's hard. 
you lose sense of time with ADHD. It, it, it's like a weird time warp in your head, and I'm trying to be better about it. And, it's, and that's like a new, it's like new but not, but it's like this new, what would you call it? Is it a mental disorder or what is it? Like, so it's like this new thing that's come about that people finally have like a label for or a name for it, but it's been around for a long time and you just didn't yeah. know. Like people say like scatterbrain or something like that. Right. And people weren't getting diagnosed or getting treated for it or at least not understanding what it is. But I think more people have compassion for it. Now, I really do. You have the best compassion for it because when we did our your Halloween shoot, I was about an hour late, which I'm never <laughs> late. And you guys both were just like, if you didn't show up, it's fine. You know what I mean? Like it's Because I'm the same way. I'm very guilty of this. I'm a very much a people pleaser. And I've done it multiple times, not just once in instant. Like I've done mm-hmm. it multiple times where I've had to cancel like the day of or I forget or something. And it's like the worst thing. It's like, to me, I think it's the rudest thing to stand someone up, you know, all stuff like that. I, I hate it. And I've done it. And you guys were very sweet. You're very like, oh, it's fine, an hour, you know, whatever. If you didn't show up, it's fine. We're under- And because I think you have all that, the ADHD, the dyslexia, you, like, understand that better than most people. And I feel more yeah. people are becoming empathetic. Again, talking about this stuff, people are like, oh, yeah, that's me too. Because I don't think I have ADHD, but I'm very bad at texting too. I won't text people back because I forget or I think I texted them back and – I love how M- M- Moses is very much like Mike in that way too. I'll be like, can you just talk to Moses now? Because I will forget things. Yep. Our, we had a bad, I coordinated something terribly. I just had like the wrong timing and it was really awful. So I was like, do you just need to have them like talk to me because I'll just forget or I just try to like put things too close together. And yeah, but I think you have the best, you you guys are very sweet and understanding with that stuff. And Yeah, we don't care about that stuff at yeah. all. Because, like, I've had really good friends that we're still friends with today that, like, they literally forgot we were recording. We were supposed to record a song, like, <laughs> at the recording studio. And we oh. showed up, and they literally just forgot and slept in. And oh. we were waiting outside just like, um, hello? <laughs> oh, my God. That's, that's, see, that's like, bad. Because you, like, yeah. And I know it's not intentional, you know. And yeah. so, uh, and we got over that in two seconds. We were like, let's just reschedule. That's amazing. Just reschedule. Just do it another day. And it it's always a bummer when things don't work out. I feel like that's yeah. it. It's like a, you know, it's a bum. But I but at the same time, it's I just feel like life is so long that why am I gonna stress about, you know, oh, I just have to reschedule day. It another day. Mm-hmm. It's not a big deal. I like that you say that life is long. Some people say life is short. And it's like life it can be really long and like beautiful and there's Feels a lot. really long. I yeah. feel like I've <laughs> I feel like I'm 200 years old. Oh my god! And there's and so I'm much like, more. And there's so many more. So much more <laughs> left. Like, can you imagine? In like 40 years, like you're gonna be in. It's crazy. There'll what be so are much we more there. Doing this. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be coming over, scooping pumpkins out yeah. with you. Oh my gosh, you guys, Trish! Literally, she told me she's never like carved a pumpkin. Never carved, carved a pumpkin. pumpkin for the first time, and you did such a good job. I was talking about. It. I can't wait to show it because I'm like, oh, we had saws, we had everything. I've never used yeah. tools. I've never carved a pumpkin. I've never done any of that stuff. This and is so great. cute. Look at this little guy. Well, this is bought and this is all Moses. I can't decorate. I can't do anything. I have no idea. I love this. Look I at how we sit. We've got little eyeballs and ghosts. I'm like looking oh. all around. <laughs> Look at this. Like, I, I didn't know. Like, where did you get this? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. This is all Moses. He goes to like Home Goods and all those stores. I've never go to. It. I want to be more that way, but I absolutely adore you, Ro, in so many Aww. ways. I had, I can even show you, I had literally like 10 note cards here. Oh my gosh. questions and, <laughs> and topics, and I didn't look at it once, and I'm just like, why? And I prepared for like hours yesterday, which is like, <laughs> fine, I know so much about oh you gosh, now. So I think I have yeah. college dyslexia on there, so we hit some, we hit some of those <laughs> we points. Did it. We did it. We did it. <laughs> There's so many note cards. They always just go out the window, which I don't mind, because you are just a delight in so many ways, and I love you in so so many ways and I'm so happy we've connected I know we've known each other throughout the years but I feel like this year I've just felt very welcomed warm by both you your sister Mike her husband it's very it's very great and your and your family your mom everyone my mom loves you happy oh thanks guys guys check out Rosanna Pancino she's doing fun Halloween videos on her channel and also she's on the Halloween cookie bake off which is so fun did yes. I say it right it's a long title Halloween, Halloween cookie challenge, oh, cookie challenge. Oh, I had it written down that's fine it's long yeah because they have a Halloween cookie bake champion off. they have like four they, baking so competitions confusing. Shows. so they have like there's the Halloween lot. championship they have Halloween ba- <laughs> there's Halloween a lot. cookie Heat challenge, challenge food network but you can also watch it on Hulu who, uh, Max. H- M- Wait, where? Max? Max and Food are in Discovery Plus. And wasn't it? Oh, cool. Veep or something you posted about. Well, yeah, because Veep is on, um, <laughs> Which Veep is on, on Max. So I was posting, oh, like, H-P-M-X. I can watch my girlfriend and Veep on the same It Spotify. was so cute. I love that Mike always, like, posts your stuff, too. He's, He's like, so adorable. I think it's adorable. It's so cute. You guys are partners. You guys are partners in life. Partners in everything. Oh my next up, a wedding. Yay! <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye. <laughs>